8, the 1B channel of the Starbird 6 truss of the International Space Station. Uh, two spacewalkers inside the equipment lock right now already in their suits and completed some of their in-suit exercise and pre-breathing exercises to purge nitrogen from their bodies. Already suited up and, uh, and about to head out the door for a start time today at 6.35 a.m. Central Time. Suited up in the right is EV-1 Chris Cassidy, International Space Station Commander of Expedition 63. On the left is Bob Bankin, Flight Engineer and Crew Member of Expedition 63, as well as the Joint Operations Commander of the SpaceX Demo-2 mission. Assisting in the suit-up process right now on the forward left end, it's uh, 10.01. Houston copies, 10.01. That was the voice of Doug Hurley, NASA astronaut and uh, flight engineer of Expedition 63, as well as the commander of the SpaceX Demo-2 mission. He's leading the suit-up process today to his right. Cosmonaut Ivan Wagner also assisting with the suit-up of our two spacewalking astronauts today. Again, Cassidy and Bankin uh, wrapping up some of their pre-breathing uh, procedures to purge nitrogen from their bodies as the suits uh, that they are wearing now, those EMUs, providing 100% oxygen environment uh, that will carry them through the six-plus hour spacewalk today. You can see some of the tools attached to the forward end of their spacesuits that they'll be using. The primary task of today's spacewalk is again completing the upgrades to the 1B channel of the Starbird 6 truss. Uh, there's three lithium-ion batteries that need to be installed on this channel. The two of them completed a spacewalk just last week, uh, June 26th. For a six-hour and seven-minute spacewalk, they completed the majority of the 1B channel. In that six hours and seven minutes, uh, Cassidy and Bankin removed five nickel hydrogen batteries and installed two new lithium ion batteries with two adapter plates. Here's the battery configuration. Uh, much will seem similar for uh, today's spacewalk. You can see the lithium ion battery and the adapter plate that needs to be attached adjacent to the lithium ion battery. Uh, the batteries that were installed, the two new ones, last week on June 26th, uh, have old nickel hydrogen batteries installed on top of the adapter adapter plates that are adjacent to them. It's an airlock. Uh, canisters 10 and 31 have been installed in EV1 and EV2, respectively, and 18 and 22 are temp stowed outside the airlock. Copy, Doug, as expected. Again, the voice of Doug Hurley from the equipment lock of the International Space Station. He's right now speaking with Josh Matthew of the Orbit One team here in Mission Control Houston. Seconds, seconds remaining on the purge. As the crew continues their nitrogen purge, the Orbit 2 team uh, getting ready to lead today's uh, spacewalk, led by Flight Director Royce Renfrew. Many of the flight controllers still coming in and about to uh, hand over. Here's the flight control team now, Royce Renfrew here in the room. Flight Director will be leading uh, today's spacewalk. To his right, uh, Jasmine Mogbelli, it'll be her voice. Check your CO2 status, less than 8.0 millimeters. And Doug, you're on space to ground one.
as Doug Hurley continues to go through the suit up procedures and get our two spacewalking astronauts out the hatch today. Robotics officers on the ground are right now maneuvering the external pallet. You can see the movement of the arm right now. This is a look at the work site where Cassidy M. Banken uh, will be spending the at least first half of today's spacewalk out at the far end of the station's starboard truss near those solar arrays. The batteries that they are swapping out uh, are the units that will store the power uh, that the solar arrays provide. That pallet containing the one new lithium-ion battery that will be installed on the 1B channel. There's three more lithium-ion batteries on that pallet. Uh, they will be saved for the 3B channel on the other side. Uh, it'll be on the other side of the uh, starboard truss. After today's primary task of installing that new lithium-ion battery, they'll head over to the other side after cleaning up their work site and making sure that that lithium-ion battery is uh, checked out and providing power uh, to the 1B channel. And they'll start the prep work for the 3B channel. Uh, the work there to replace the uh, final channel and upgrade uh, with lithium-ion batteries, the final channel of eight of the uh, International Space Station's power channels, those uh, spacewalks scheduled for later this month. Maylock on the one. Two successful leak checks. We'll meet you back in uh, step 15 of the EMU pre breathe. Copy, Doug. We're with you there. And And Doug, just so we're on the same page, we're tracking the go for depress time as 1041. Now you're hearing good leak checks uh, right on the timeline now to get our two spacewalking astronauts out the hatch on time, 6.35 a.m. Central. Here's some of the work that they'll uh, start with right here. This is a look at the graphic of where we are right now. Uh, Cassidy and Banken uh, pretty much did an EVA and a half on June 26, uh, blasting through their timeline and completing all the objectives and some of the objectives that were originally scheduled for today. So here's the configuration that we uh, that they last completed, uh, moving an old nickel hydrogen battery from slot six over to slot four. The first task on today's spacewalk will be to install a new lithium ion battery into slot six. That'll be the last uh, lithium ion battery to be installed on this channel. Now, of course, for the lithium ion battery to uh, work with the channel, uh, they'll have to take out the nickel hydrogen battery and install an adapter plate. That will be the last task uh, of the battery upgrade work, all in slot five. And uh, on the external pallet there, you see on the left, uh, they'll take that uh, adapter plate over to slot five, hook it up to the uh, lithium ion battery in slot six, make sure the power is checked out, and that'll complete the work for the 1B channel.
Now, you heard good, good leak checks from both Cassidy and Bankin. Again, proceeding on the timeline to get them out the hatch on time. You see the bag that uh, Wagner is taking from the uh, crew lock. That's at the far end of this camera view. That is a safer unit. That stands for the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. The next task will be uh, Hurley and Wagner working together to install these simplified aid for EVA rescues onto the backs of both of our spacewalkers today. It's essentially a jetpack. Uh, they'll install it, and uh, if for whatever reason our two spacewalking astronauts were to become untethered in the unlikely scenario, they could uh, pull down some handles. Uh, and uh, guide themselves gently back to the International Space Station to safety. But of course, those tether configurations will be the primary way of uh, keeping our two spacewalking astronauts attached to the International Space Station as they complete their tasks. In fact, some of the first checks you'll hear uh, from Cassidy and Bankin before they even make their way out of the hatch is making sure those tethers are in a good configuration. as Hurley and Wagner work in the uh, station's equipment lock to install this safer unit onto Chris Cassidy. That'll be one of the final steps before they actually maneuver Cassidy himself into the crew lock. From where Cassidy is positioned, it's sort of at the uh, left side of this screen. Uh, they'll go in uh, one at a time, uh, pulling out some of the bag and bags and making sure they have all of their tools and tethers configured before closing the hatch and getting our two spacewalking astronauts out the door today. Once they get out the door at 6.35 a.m. Central, it'll be the eighth spacewalk for both of them, both veteran uh, spacewalkers today. Uh, you can see Chris Cassidy is EV-1. He'll be the lead spacewalker today, and you can see identify him by the red stripes around his suit thighs. Bob Bankin, also his eighth spacewalk, he'll be EV-2, wearing the suit with no stripes around the uh, thighs. Both uh, have uh, more, uh, sp seven spacewalks under their belt. Uh, Cassidy, you can see more than 37 hours of spacewalking time. Bankin, more than 43 hours. For Expedition 63, this is the second spacewalk, the first just last week, to uh, start the 1B channel on the Starboard 6 truss. Uh, this spacewalk, though, will be the 229th in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. This is the ninth in the series of spacewalks since 2017 to upgrade uh, all eight channels of the International Space Station, replacing nickel hydrogen batteries with lithium ion. Again, this is the seventh channel of eight. The uh, P4, S4, and P6 truss already completed uh, with lithium ion batteries and providing power through the life of the station.
For those just tuning in, you are seeing uh, Doug Hurley at the forward end of your screen there, outfit Chris Cassidy, one of the uh, spacewalking astronauts for today's uh, battery upgrade EVA. He's outfitting uh, the EV-1 suit with a safer unit, simplified aid for EVA rescue. This is one of the final steps uh, to outfit the uh, spacesuits before uh, pushing Cassidy into the crew lock. You can see Wagner already maneuvering uh, Cassidy into place. This crew lock uh, at the uh, bottom of the crew lock you can see from the angle of your view here. That's the hatch. Uh, once the hatch behind uh, Cassidy uh, towards his feet is closed and the crew lock is depressurized, Cassidy will be the one to uh, open uh, the hatch and begin today's spacewalk. So far, everything going right on the timeline to get our two spacewalking astronauts out the hatch at 6.35 a.m. Central Time. Right now, the International Space Station is 259 statute miles over Algeria in an orbital daytime. If we stick to the timeline here, uh, Space Station will enter into an orbital darkness, and right about the time that Cassidy and Bank can open up the hatch, we'll be getting some sunrise into an orbital daytime to start today's spacewalk. This is Mission Control Houston still continuing with the uh, beginning procedures to get our two spacewalking astronauts out the hatch today. Again, everything going according to the timeline so far. 6.35 a.m. Central Time is our target uh, to uh, get out the hatch and begin today's spacewalk. Doug Hurley you see in the forward end of your screen and uh, Yvonne Wagner at the top now outfitting Bob Banken with the safer unit, simplified aid for EVA rescue. Again, essentially a jetpack uh, that can be used if the uh, unlikely event of uh, the astronaut becoming untethered were to occur. This is uh, the final step before positioning Banken in the crew lock. You can see just behind Banken in this screen, Cassidy already uh, in the crew lock. His uh, He's positioned with his face right towards the hatch. He'll be the one to open up the hatch today and begin today's spacewalk. Of course, after uh, closing the hatch and depressurizing the uh, vestibule. A correction that uh, veteran cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin, now in the equipment lock, assisting Hurley with the uh, suit-up procedures and getting Banken situated with the safer unit. Doug Hurley... Uh, Expedition 63 flight engineer and commander of SpaceX Demo 2. 
the lead uh, for what's called the Suit IV. He's the lead for uh, getting our two spacewalking astronauts uh, situated here and uh, prepared for today's spacewalk. He'll also be the lead robotics officer at the hands of the uh, uh, station's uh, robotic arm, at the end of which is the external pallet containing that last lithium-ion battery to be installed onto the 1B channel. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, Hurley there on the forward end of your screen, Doug Hurley, uh, leading the suit up uh, of Bob Bankin. EV2 for today's spacewalk on the right there. On the forward end of the screen, Yvonne Wagner now coming into the forward end, Anatoly Ivanishin also assisting with the suit up. Both of our uh, spacewalking astronauts attached by umbilical, providing power and air uh, to uh, our two spacewalking astronauts right now. Some of the next steps coming up will be to uh, position Bankin into the crew lock that you see behind him. Cassidy already positioned there. Uh, the hatch will close between the equipment lock where Hurley and uh, Yvonne Wagner currently are with Bankin. And... Uh, the crew and the crew lock where Cassidy is and Bankin will soon be. Once that hatch is closed, uh, teams here in Mission Control Houston, uh, led by Orbit 1, who have been seeing over some of the uh, suit up procedures here, uh, before getting our two spacewalking astronauts out the hatch today, they'll be the one to conduct a go no go poll, making sure everything is okay uh, to begin the depressurization sequence. Depressurization occurs in increments just to make sure everything is safe. Of course, uh, the leak checks on the suits were performed to make sure the suits are good uh, to go out into vacuum. The crew lock itself will be brought down from uh, just about uh, the pressure you will find at uh, sea level, 14.7 psi. That's what the station is. It will be brought down to about 5 psi. Hold there for a little bit and just make sure that it's steady uh, and check for any leaks before proceeding down to vacuum. Uh, the a U.S. spacewalk officially begins when the suits uh, are connected not by umbilical but switched to battery power. That will be the official start time uh, for today's spacewalk to complete the 1B channel on the Starboard 6 truss, the seventh of eight power channels uh, to be completed today.
on the right hip of Bankin, you see uh, some of the tools that he'll be using. He's outfitted with some equipment that he'll need uh, to perform today's uh, battery swap. That was a pistol grip tool. You'll hear that term a lot, PGT. Sort of the uh, space drill that they'll use uh, for the bolts that hold the lithium-ion batteries and nickel-hydrogen batteries into place on both the uh, integrated electronics assembly, that's the uh, interface that has the uh, batteries that work with the solar rays on the truss of the International Space Station, as well as the external pallet containing those new batteries. Yvonne Wagner and uh, Doug Hurley situating Bankin in the crew lock. Right where about uh, Doug Hurley is, uh, is the hatch that will uh, close. Once that hatch is closed, uh, Hurley will be right there in the equipment lock, talking with our two spacewalking astronauts through the uh, handset there. Two astronauts will be hot mic'd and uh, will be able to chat with Hurley as they take, uh, go through the procedures to close the hatch and depressurize that crew lock down to vacuum. Some of the pre-work to begin today's spacewalk underway aboard the International Space Station right now just in a handover period. This will happen quite a number of times throughout today's coverage of the spacewalk. Handing over from some of the tracking and data relay satellites that provide video and audio from the station. What you're looking at now is the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The Orbit 2 team is here, uh, now conducting a handover from the Orbit 1 team, just getting a status, uh, and it'll be this team here that'll carry us through today's spacewalk. 
Royce Renfrew here in the uh, in the in the room, flight director leading the teams, conducting that handover, going through all the checks. Immediately to the right of Renfrew is Jasmine Mogbelli. She is the ground IV. It will be her voice from here in Mission Control Houston to our two spacewalking astronauts, uh, Chris Cassidy and Bob Benkin. Jackie Kagi is also here in the room as the spacewalk officer. Uh, it'll be her that is uh, that knows the procedures of the spacewalk backwards and forwards, working with her teams in the back room. Uh, she is the lead here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room with the Orbit 2 team. Today's spacewalk is uh, to once again complete the 1B channel. And just want to tag up how much time do we have left. It looks like uh, 10 minutes or nine and a half with our clock. Yeah, Doug, we're nine minutes out. So again, the uh, primary work today is to complete this 1B channel. Okay. Okay. Are you good with us uh, just closing the hatch and being ready to go? And Doug, your go to uh, continue through step 80. The uh, eight-minute clock is to before you can go past step 80. So that was Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station, just confirming those procedures again. Uh, he's working with the ground teams here, now handing over to Orbit 2. Uh, it'll be uh, the teams here that will walk him through the procedures uh, to eventually close that hatch and begin the depressurization sequence and getting our two spacewalking astronauts out the hatch. Uh, we're scheduled for uh, egress at uh, in the beginning of the spacewalk at 6.35 a.m. Central Time. Now, as uh, Hurley and Yvonne Wagner here in the equipment lock wait uh, for that clock to reach zero and they can begin the uh, hatch closing and depressurization, let's go through some of today's uh, procedures. Here's where we left off from the last spacewalk. Cassidy and Banken essentially completing a spacewalk and a half, getting through a lot of the uh, procedures that were originally scheduled for today. So this was the last task that was completed on June 26, moving a lithium, uh, nickel hydrogen battery from slot 6 over to slot 4. That made slot 6 empty and allows for the first task of today to be moving a brand new lithium ion battery from the pallet over to the 1B IEA, that is the integrated electronics assembly. Uh, that's what's integrated with the solar rays and the truss segment providing and storing power in those batteries and uh, heading and uh, sending that power power downstream uh, to the rest of the International Space Station's uh, very essential systems. So that lithium-ion battery uh, into slot 6 will be the first task. And of course, to work with the electronics assembly, it needs an adapter plate. So they're going to move the adapter plate from the uh, slot D on the external pallet over to slot 5. There's an old nickel hydrogen battery in the way, so they just need to move that one over to uh, slot D of the external pallet. And that will complete the work on the integrated electronics assembly. From there, the next task will be just to sort of complete their work site. Uh, and, and clean up from some of the work that they've done on the 1B channel. Now, because they uh, really don't have too much to complete for the 1B channel, they'll spend some of the next uh, procedures not only cleaning up, but getting some of the prep work ready for the 3B channel. That's a new channel uh, on the other side of this um, Starbird 6 truss. It still has those old nickel hydrogen batteries, uh, so they will uh, uh, get some of the prep work done to remove that. You can see now Doug Hurley and Yvonne Wagner already closing the hatch, uh, tightening it for a nice seal. Again, some of the next procedures will be to depressurize, but not all the way to vacuum. They'll get it down to 5 PSI. 
We still have a clock of about five minutes before the teams here conduct a go, no go poll. Uh, for that depressurization, making sure everything is set uh, before they hit the button to uh, begin the depressurization sequence. But Hurley and uh, Yvonne Wagner already getting through those procedures, making sure that our spacewalking astronauts get out on time today, just about an hour from now. Now again, what was original? Step 72 and 73 are complete. Houston copies. And Doug, we'll put. And it looks like you guys have uh, 74 and subsequent until we get uh, ready to start the depress. Yeah, copy, Doug. We're putting those in work right now. And that was Doug Hurley aboard the International Space Station just confirming those steps. As we speak, the uh, flight control teams here in Mission Control Houston conducting a go, no go poll. A go, no go poll to uh, make sure that uh, everything is set for that depressurization. And Airlock Houston on Space to Ground 1, EV crew is hot mic'd. EV1 copy. EV2 copy. And Houston copies EV1 and 2, loud and clear. And airlock Houston on one, we have just over a minute left on the clock. And Bob, if you could check the uh, switch, deep press pump power is off. Verified off. And check deep press pump enable LED on. The enable LED is on.
Airlock Houston, you guys are go for deep breath. The clock has expired. Uh, we will hand you over to the capable hands of the Orbit 2 team. You guys have a good day out there. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. And with that, Doug Hurley will walk our two spacewalking astronauts through the depressurization procedures. Josh Matthew, the Capcom of Orbit 1. Depress card. Do Bob on the UIA. Switch the depressed pump power to on. Okay, the depressed pump power is on. Okay, there's 10 seconds. Take the depress pump manual isolation valve to open. Expect alert tone. Depress pump manual isolation valve is open. Got the tone. Monitor your suit pressure gauge for less than 5.5. Copy. Copy. Doug Hurley inside the equipment lock walking through our two spacewalking astronauts today. Chris Cassidy and Bob Benkin, depressurization is underway, coming down from 14.7 PSI, just about to hit 13 already. The uh, depressurization is not the official start of today's spacewalk. That'll be when they switch to battery power. So in step three, when the crew lock pressure gets to 6.0, you guys will get an alert tone as well. Crew lock now at 11 pounds per square inch, heading to 5 pounds per square inch. That is the check mark. The hold at 5 psi uh, for a little bit, just making sure everything is steady, that it's holding pressure. Do a quick leak check before proceeding down to vacuum. Now in another uh, short handover period, again, we'll uh, encounter a few of these throughout today's spacewalk, handing over uh, the TDRS satellites, tracking and data relay satellites uh, that are in geosynchronous orbit, about 23,000 miles away from Earth, uh, providing video and audio communication from the station, just handing over as the station flies uh, 17,500 miles per hour around the Earth. Station about to enter into an orbital nighttime. Right now, the South Indian Ocean about to cross the Terminator line and head uh, on a northeasterly track. Uh, you can see here on the map just to the east of the eastern coast of uh, Australia into the Pacific Ocean. The sounds you're hearing now is the depressurization from the uh, uh, Quest airlock of the International Space Station. Now less than 10 pounds per square inch, again heading to 5.
This is a live view of the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Orbit 2 teams here in the room led by Flight Director Royce Renfrew. The voice of Capcom that you might hear from this room is uh, Canadian Space Agency astronaut and uh, veteran spaceflight uh, and veteran astronaut, veteran uh, expedition uh, crew member of the International Space Station, David St. Jacques. He's the Capcom that you might hear uh, on the inside of the International Space Station. Doug Hurley will be the main voice through some of the depressurization procedures, but the comms will be handed over to the ground IV, Jasmine Mogbelli, here in the room. Ground IV is the uh, voice that you'll hear. It'll be her voice to Cassidy and Bankin throughout the duration of today's spacewalk, communicating the procedures from here in the room up to the crew members conducting today's spacewalk. You see Mug Bailey there in the middle console, Royce Renfrew, flight director, leading the teams here of Orbit 2. Doug Hurley, flight engineer of Expedition 63 and commander of the SpaceX Demo 2 mission, leading through uh, the procedures of getting our two spacewalking astronauts ready to go out the hatch. Really just a few steps uh, left. The uh, depressurization sequence underway, just less than uh, 8 pounds per square inch at this time. We're heading down to 5. We'll do a quick hold at 5 PSI, making sure there are no leaks uh, in the crew lock before proceeding down the vacuum. Chris Cassidy and Bob Bankin on the other side of that hatch right now. Uh, the the uh, crew lock where Cassidy and Bankin are situated in being depressurized at this time. Now less than 7 PSI. We're heading down to 5 PSI. Again, we'll do a quick hold there before proceeding down to vacuum on the inside of the station where uh, Doug Hurley and Yvonne Wagner are situated on the equipment lock that set uh, the pressure of about sea level 14.7 PSI. We're going to take the uh, depress pump manual isolation valve to close, but that's at 5, and I'll give you a call as well. Copy. Okay, Bob, as expected, I'm lagging you by about 0.3. Copy.
Parish 5.1. Copy, I was just going to call you. You're getting close. Okay, go ahead and take it close.
that reel, the red reel, and the anchor hook for that red reel is temporarily stowed on my mini workstation. The reel is unlocked and the tether retracts. I can also see my green uh, camera light. I have this dry in my gloves as they fly. That is from EV2. Copy uh, checks from EV1. I will, uh, Chris, uh, when we're outside, unless you can see it now, that waist tether. Looks in uh, good condition as far as I can see it on my uh, right hand side. Your yeah, right hand side, got yep. it. And it should be closed and locked onto my boot, the crew hook side. So you see it closed and locked on, onto the D ring itself. And the fabric looking good, no color showing. And the big hook is uh, closed and locked on the reel. I also have a green light. I'm up on two PSI. I concur. Are you ready for depressed pump manual isolation valve to close? Showing a little bit high. Let's give it a, a second or two. A quick summary of what's occurred so far. We got down to five pounds per square inch. Good leak check. Now proceeding down to two. Manual isolation valve is closed. I'll be closed and on the UIA, take the depressed pump power switch to off. Press pump power is off. Okay. Tethers are all checked. When we get a DPDT of about zero, expect an alert tone. And Chris, when we get a EV hatch delta P of less than 0.5, you can open the hatch, but it'll be a minute or two at least. Okay. Be all. So again, good reports from Chris Cassidy and Bob Benkin on the other side of that hatch. We had a good leak check at five pounds per square inch. Everything good to proceed down to vacuum. Uh, they had a task at two pounds per square inch to turn a pump uh, ISO valve to close. That is complete and the uh, crew lock is continuing to depressurize down to about uh, 0.5 PSI. From the inside of the equipment log, Doug Hurley, you see in the foreground there, will be monitoring the uh, the progress of the depressurization down to 0.5, taking pictures uh, through the hatchway there is uh, cosmonaut Ivan Wagner, assisting Hurley with uh, some of the suit-up procedures to get our two spacewalking astronauts ready for the day. This is Mission Control, Control Houston. You will continue to hear Doug Hurley uh, through some of the final procedures to get 
our spacewalking astronauts outfitted uh, before opening up the hatch. He'll hand over comms uh, very shortly once we get down to about 0.5 PSI to ground IV Jasmine Mogbelli here in Mission Control Houston. It'll be her voice that you'll hear throughout the uh, majority of today's spacewalk as Cassidy and Bankin uh, go outside of the hatch to the starboard six truss and complete uh, the installation of brand new batteries on the uh, 1B power channel, the seventh of eight power channels uh, to be upgraded, completed uh, later today once they install the final lithium ion battery to that power channel. The uh, crew lock continuing to uh, depressurize down to 0.5 PSI, a little less than 1.5 PSI at this time. The official start time of today's spacewalk uh, will begin. The clock will start once the power of each of the two suits, uh, EV-1 and EV-2, EV-1 being Cassidy, EV-2 being Bankin, uh, once those suits are switched to battery power. That'll be the official start time of today's spacewalk, and the clock will begin. Now Hurley's job is not done once he's completed with uh, some of these procedures to get them out the hatch. Uh, afterwards, he'll head over uh, to the International Space Station's uh, U.S. lab. From there, he has controls of the station's robotic arm. It'll be him maneuvering uh, the robotic arm, at the end of which is the external pallet containing the brand new lithium-ion batteries. Uh, he'll be moving it uh, just a little bit uh, backwards and forwards as requested by the crew uh, so they can get within reach uh, of all of the batteries that they need to swap. Again, there's only really two uh, left. There's the new lithium ion battery from the pallet that needs to go onto the station and then they need to uh, swap an old nickel hydrogen battery with an adapter plate uh, that will officially connect that lithium ion battery to the uh, station providing uh, storage of power from the station's solar arrays on the starboard truss.
This is Mission Control Houston. Depressurization still underway, proceeding as planned. Uh, it takes an estimated 13 minutes uh, to go from 2 PSA down to uh, 0.5. Right now we're hanging at about 0.8, uh, proceeding slowly but surely towards that 0.5 mark. Once we get to that point, uh, Hurley from the inside of the equipment lock still monitoring that progress down to 0.5. Uh, very shortly after we get to that milestone, he'll hand over communications to here in Mission Control Houston. Jasmine Mobelli, the uh, ground IV, it'll be her voice. You hear, and you just heard a 0.7 from the crew. About right, based on our inside uh, readings. The crew on the other side of the hatch last reported 7 PSI. We're still making good progress down to 5 PSI. Again, Hurley will hand over communications to Jasmine Mogbelli. It will be the ground IV. It will be her voice. You hear guiding uh, Cassidy and Bankin through the initial procedures, uh, some of the first of which are configuring those tethers once again. You heard uh, some tether readouts earlier when they were situated in the crew lock. Once they get out the hatch, one of the first things they'll do is just make sure those tethers remain in a good configuration. That'll be the uh, primary way that uh, uh, Cassidy and Bankin remain attached to the station as they conduct their procedures today. The first of which is uh, finally upgrading the uh, uh, 1B channel of the Starbird 6 truss, that one lithium ion battery left and removing an old nickel hydrogen battery, replacing that with an adapter plate. Much of the procedures that were originally scheduled for today were accomplished on June 26th during the six hour and seven, seven minute EVA. Uh, the two spacewalkers conducted um, a lot of the procedures that were originally scheduled for today. So after Cassidy and Bank can complete the 1B channel, they'll do mostly get aheads. Uh, first outfitting the 3B channel, which will be the next and final channel to be upgraded on the station and then performing a series of get-aheads like routing some power cables, ethernet cables, removing an H fixture for some uh, future power system upgrades, and if time permits, uh, removing an, uh, a lens cover on one of the cameras on the outside of the station. All get-aheads that were scheduled uh, between these two uh, spacewalks, now primary procedures, uh, some things that have been on the to-do list for a while, Cassidy and Bengen will get a chance to tackle today after completing the installation of the final battery on the 1B channel. Here it looks like about a tap. For the hatch, Chucky. Yeah, bud. A good read from the crew on the other side of the hatch. Cassidy and Bankin reading a good hold at uh, 5 PSI. Now able to open up the hatch, still waiting for that official start time. That'll be when Cassidy and Bankin switch their suits to battery power.
Okay, we see it open. Boom at night time. Cassidy reporting in orbital night time. The station 260 miles over the Pacific Ocean. 14, and with that, Jaws, if you're ready, we can hand it over to you. Good luck, guys. Good. Thanks, Doug and Yvonne, once again for setting us up uh, on, in a timely manner here. Chris and Bob, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, well, that will step into post depress, staggering your switch throws, switch power to bat, expect a warning tone. Power bat. You power bat. Both of you check your display switches are functional. Functional. Functional 3 v 2 Bob on the UIA switch power EV1 and 2 to off. EV1 and 2 power switches are off. LEDs are off. Copy LEDs. Both of you can disconnect your SCUs from the DCM, install the DCM cover, and stow the SCU in the pouch. Remove and stow DB1. DCM cover up. Remove and stow DCM cover up for EV2. Copy. Bob on the crew lock, check depress pump man ISO valve is closed. Press pump man, ISO valve is verified closed. Both of you can take your temperature control valve to max hot. Max hot, EV1. EV2 is max hot. You can both switch water to on. Water on EV1. Water on EV2. Check your DCMs are blank and bytes are off. Blank, no bite. Blank, no bite. You can both switch your temperature control valves to the desired setting. Four for now, EV1. Ground IV, Jasmine Mogbelli walking uh, Cassidy and Bankin through the procedures to start today's spacewalk. We do have an official start time. It is 6.13 a.m. Central Time. Cassidy and Bankin switch their suits to battery power. The uh, spacewalk today to complete the 1B channel is officially underway. Okay, you can both set your visors as required. We're currently in a night pass for the next 10 minutes. And with that, uh, Chris, we copied your HAP check. You can open the hatch thermal cover and egress the airlock uh, with the ORU bag, which will stow on your BRT. Bob, we did not copy your HAP check. Thanks, Jaws. Uh, my HAP is uh, dry, baseline. Copy, Bob. 
You'll hear HAP check a lot throughout today's spacewalk as well as glove checks. The HAP is the helmet absorption pad. Okay, I'm going to collect the uh, cable, power cable. Okay. that uh, they'll do periodic checks to make sure there are no scuffs on their gloves and that their haps, their helmet absorption pans, pads are dry throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. You now see the hatch is open and you're starting to see some light from the inside of the crew lock. My hook onto, uh... Cassidy and Bankham will be performing these tether checks. Uh, that's all the colors that you'll be hearing. The first uh, one out the hatch today will be Cassidy. Uh, just make sure you get a good inspection of the load alleviating strap. Station in an orbital nighttime, 259 statue miles over the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, John, I've got the power cable. All right, my yellow anchor hook is closed and locked. Copy. Oh, the green or the meal. The green or the meal is in the unlocked, and the load alleviating straps in good condition. No color showing. Copy, Chris. You can tether to and attach the aft safety tether green hook to your red reel. Green hook to red reel. Copy that. And Bob, when you're ready, we'll take an inspection on your uh, safety tether load alleviating strap on the forward D ring. The waist tether on the forward D, D ring is in uh, good condition. Copy, Bob. Bob, you can attach your yellow hook to the safety tether reel on the forward external D ring. Josh, my, uh... The camera position being situated towards the work site. You can see some of the right light reflecting off of the Canada Arm 2, at the end of which is the external pallet. That pallet contains that final lithium ion battery. And the reel is unlocked. Reel was unlocked. Yep. Okay, uh, good config, Chris. Josh, my... Yellow hook is closed and locked. Onto my uh, field, it's uh, it's here as well. So the one on the uh, forward uh, D ring, the lock. Copy, Bob. With um, that, you can tether to and attach the forward safety tether green hook to your red reel. And Chris, you can release your waist tether from the airlock D ring extender. Great copy that. While all that's at work, I can see Bob has three mini workstation tabs up, and both of his paper handles are down. Been good, Bob. Thank you. Copy. Cassidy and Bankin uh, just reporting their tether configuration, making sure their reels and everything are aligned as expected, as well as the safer, the simplified aid for EVA rescue that can be used if they were to become untethered. That green hook. Okay, let me get out of your way. Charles, I have the uh, green hook closed and locked onto my red reel. Copy, and Bob, is that reel unlocked? Both reels are unlocked. 
Okay, Bob, you can release your waist tether from the airlock D-ring extender, and once you're both released, you can close the hatch thermal cover. Copy that. Reach it, Bob, you want me to get I can reach it. It's a little bit tricky because the rat is retracting it. Oh, yeah. Closed. Copy thermal covers closed, and we copied uh, Chris your checks on Bob. Uh, Bob will need uh, buddy checks on Chris. It looks like your left safer handle is down. I can see all three tabs are up, and your PGT is kind of blocking me. And I can verify your right safer handle is down. Copy, thank you. This looks to be in a good config. Copy, good checks on both of you. Bob, you'll be leading out. You'll head to the port CETA card to stow that S3 power cable. Um, and Chris, you'll trail. You'll both be releasing your fair leads on the way up the CETA spur, leaving the adjustable tether there. Okay, copy all. And I have uh, two cautions for both of you. Avoid contact with deployed TUS cable, Zenith, and Nader Cedar rails. On S6, avoid contact with radiator. How copy? If you want to copy. And Chris, I'm just going to pause here. We have a look at me. Uh, my safety to the reel may be behind me. Uh, it's it's going around your hip. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the uh, okay. if you go to when you get to the cedar spur, just yeah. open your right hip towards it. Okay. So. Cassidy and Bankin uh, continuing to perform buddy checks, making sure that they are set to begin today's spacewalk. In the meantime, from the inside of the International Space Station, Doug Hurley at the controls of the station's robotic arm. From the view on the outside, you might be able to see it move a little bit. He's just configuring, making sure that that's all set for when Cassidy and Bankin arrive. Hurley's talking with uh, David St. Jacques, the Capcom here uh, in Mission Control, Houston. Speaking with Hurley on the inside as Jasmine Mugbelly, the ground IV, speaks with Cassidy and Bankin, uh, about to uh, head out the hatch and begin today's spacewalk heading towards the Starboard 6 truss. The air lead on handrail 3410. Copy, Bob. That's complete. Good. Doug Hurley, we're maneuvering the uh, Canon Arm 2 as we speak from the inside. We're starting to get a little bit of sunlight as the space station flies into an orbital daytime over the Pacific Ocean, just west off the coast of California. Here comes the sun, yeah. All right, I'm at my uh, early point, and I am releasing. Copy that, Chris. Fair lead. And, Chris, after that, you'll head uh, all the way out to the uh, anchor hooks below the outboard seat of cart. Okay, copy. Anchor hooks.
have arrived at the key to cart. Copy, Bob. Some great views of the astronauts making their way out to the work site. We just had an orbital sunrise. The station uh, just off the coast of uh, Oregon right now about to pass over the western United States. Over at the far side closest to the Starboard 6 truss is Bob Bank. And coming up on the rear here is uh, EV-1 Chris Cassidy. And we have a handover in 10 seconds. And there's the handover that was mentioned by Moog Belly here in Mission Control Houston. This is uh, some of the video and audio we're getting from station being relayed through geosynchronous satellites. A short handover of video and audio will be regaining those shortly. In the meantime, we're already ahead of schedule. Originally scheduled for an EVA start time at 6.35 a.m. Central, beginning at 6.13 a.m. Central as the official start time. Just a little over 16 minutes into today's spacewalk, Cassidy and Bankin already making their way out to the work site. Teams in the International Space Station Flight Control Room would lead today's tasks, the first of which are uh, the final, uh, the installation of the final battery. Here's the situation as of now from the last spacewalk last week. The uh, nickel hydrogen battery from slot six was moved over to slot four, giving slot six an open position. The first task will be moving a lithium ion battery into slot six. That's on, the slot six is on the station side. Over on the left, that's the external pallet. And then, of course, it needs an uh, adapter plate, so they'll swap the adapter plate with a nickel-hydrogen battery, putting that nickel-hydrogen on the external pallet for disposal. And um, Bob, we'll have you check your gauntlets and hold for a second prior to crossing the Sarge. We want to make sure the arm's in position. Okay, um, Bob, the, uh, the arm is in position, so you can uh, give us a gauntlet check and continue. You'll be going all the way outboard to drop off your green hook at handrail 2076. Copy, I have a good gauntlet on the left and the right. Copy, Bob. And uh, Chris, once you get to the anchor hooks, we'll have you check both of those. Okay, copy. Starting to get some helmet camera views. You'll see these uh, pop up throughout today's spacewalk. You're seeing the helmet cam designation from Chris Cassidy. There's a translucent number on the bottom right of your screen, 18. He'll be helmet camera number 18. Bob Benkin uh, will be number 20. Looking at Bob's anchor on 3060. The big hook is closed and locked. Scoot. And I'm looking at mine. Copy, Bob. 3061. My uh, anchor point on 3061 is also closed and locked. Good complete. Copy, Chris. Thanks. Um, we'll take gauntlet checks and then you'll proceed outboard to your green hook location at handrail 2004. 2004, both left and right gauntlets are in 
please. Copy, and I have a couple of warnings and cautions for both of you when you're ready to copy. That's good for me, how about you? That was, that was good for me as well. Just, I was just uh, double checking that the arm is in a good configuration for me to continue. Hey, firm, it's in a good config and brakes are on. You are good to continue. Okay, uh, warnings, EP wheels are no touch for pinch points. EP PVGF grapple shafts and curvet coupling teeth are no touch. Cautions, translate only on handrails. Do not impart loads into any ORU on the external pallet. No sudden movements on the EP. Maintain less than 0.45 feet per second translation speed. Wait until pallet motion dampens out before imparting any loads. How copy? PV1 copies. PV2 copies. And I'm outboarding the Sarge. Copy. Doug, com check, Robo, Doug. I'm clear, Chris, how many? Okay, well, I'm clear. I'm uh, just a minute or two from up and on the pallet. Okay, we're ready to go. And uh, as of now, the brakes are on and you're clear to maneuver. And then just let me know uh, as we get down the road if you need anything uh, tweaked with the uh, position. Very copy. I am at my anchor point position, Jaws. Copy, Chris. You can drop your green hook on handrail 2004. Green hook 2004. I'm at my green hook location as well. Copy, Bob. You can drop your green hook on handrail 2076. Copy, green hook to 2076. Chris Cassidy pictured in the foreground there. You can identify him in the suit with the red stripes there. The far end of the station is Bob Bankin, both working on the uh, first tasks. Copy, Chris. Um, Bob, you can head to the crew lock bag to configure your PGT with the hex driver from the pit pin ret. And Chris, you are go to translate onto the EP. You'll be stowing the ORU bag on the handrails between batteries Bravo and Delta. Let me know when you're ready for the numbers. All right, I'm looking at the APFR since it's right here. Six, Golf, Golf, Fox 12. And it has good settings, Chris. Solid, good wiggle check. Black on black. Okay, Doug, I'm coming onto the pallet. Copy, you're clear, brakes are on. Copy that. So that read out to uh, Bankin was for Bankin to uh, configure his space drill, the uh, PGT. He'll get that ready as uh, 
uh, Cassidy prepares to, uh, he's already on actually, the external pallet. That pallet contains that new battery. That'll be the first task of the day, getting the new lithium ion battery from the pallet over to the station's truss. And then you'll tend the PGT and ratchet to the outside of the bag, leaving them on the RET RET series. Okay, copy all. That's how it works. From the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy, his first task, stowing that uh, bag, that tool bag, onto the external pallet. Okay, hey, Charles, I've got the uh, Kulak bag reconfigured. I collected the adjustable tether, small, small. That was uh, left out here to make sure that it stood flat. It's now attached to the outside of the Kulak bag. And the Kulak bag has uh, also got its large, small, adjustable, in addition to the integral tether uh, attached between 20. 49 and 2054. Copy, Bob. And with that, you can configure your PGT with the hex driver from the pit pin RET and attach that PGT to the crew lock bag with the RET RET and the adjustable end of it will go to the DCSU H2 scoop.
Okay, Jaws, I've got both cameras on me. Working on the PGT. Copy, like Chris. It. And Jaws, I've got the 9 inch X head attached to the PGT. Type test. Copy, Bob. And that PGT will attach to the crew lock bag with the RET RET. That's complete. Copy. And the uh, other end of that, the adjustable equipment tether will go to DCSU H2 scoop. Do I need to get anything else out of the uh, crew lock bag at this time? Ratchet Just the ratchet wrench. Okay, the bag is reclosed. Copy. Okay, I think I'm ready to uh, launch the pallet. Jasmine, if you agree. Yeah, Chris, we'll just take a glove, half, and gauntlet check from you, and then you're go. Okay. Gloves are the same as egress. You can pick, half dry, gauntlets, place. Copy, Chris. Good checks. And on uh, on Doug's go, you can ingress the EP APFR, and I have some cautions for you when ready, for both of you. And just to verify, the uh, PGT adjustable goes to H2 on the DCSU, correct? That's correct, Bob. Bob, how's this timing working out? You uh, need me to come over there for anything? I think I'm just about uh, complete. I'm going to the APFR next, I believe. Check its settings. That's correct, Bob. You'll check the settings, and uh, we'll have you roll, uh, complete a roll as well to Delta. And I have some uh, some cautions for the external pallet when you're both ready. I'm ready. Once torque is broken on an H bolt, do not impart loads into the corresponding micro square. Avoid translation and BRT loads into a scoop on the H2 micro square for lithium ion batteries installed with bracket interference. That'll apply to slot six. One breaking torque on external pallet, apply less than 55 pounds force and do not exceed 20 pounds force during ORU soft dock, engage, disengage with the external pallet. How copy? Copy all, EB1. Copy all, EB2. So with that uh, read of cautions from Jasmine Mo Belly here in Mission Control Houston, uh, the worksite preparations is complete. Uh, the the uh, you can see Cassidy and Bankin preparing their worksite, their uh, foot restraints, their cordless power drills, all of their tool bags in place, ready to go. That first task now about to be underway. Uh, it'll be taking a new lithium ion battery from the pallet that was referenced by Mugbelly over to the integrated electronics assembly of the International Space Station, the final lithium ion battery uh, to be installed onto this power channel. Yes, and I've completed 
completed the roll to Delta. Copy, so final setting, Bob, should be 12, Quebec, Quebec, Delta 12. 12, Quebec, Quebec, Delta 12 is set. Okay, Bob, we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check, and then you can start heading towards the EP. Okay. My uh, hap is uh, still baseline. Both of my gauntlets are up. My left glove is in, in condition I left the uh, airlock with. And the... Uh, Right glove is also in uh, pristine condition except for some uh, additional smudging. I think the smudging is uh, coming from the black stripe on the bumpers is my best guess. Bumpers with the alignment stripe. Copy on the smudging, Bob. Okay, and uh, you can translate towards the EP. So that final readout was the settings of the foot restraint over at the integrated electronics assembly. That foot restraint will be used once the lithium-ion battery is removed from the pallet. The next uh, objective here, uh, the next work site where Cassidy and Bankin will both be, Bob uh, Bankin now heading over to that work site. The foot restraint over at the electronics assembly that Bankin was just checking in a good configuration for uh, when it's ready to install onto the truss. Still camera still in the bag. It's on, on my right swing arm. Oh, uh, copy. You want it? No, I was just figured we'd get it. We got it situated. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. Yeah, I'll we'll get it situated after we get over there. Chris, you've got a, so to be aware of on your right foot, your safety tether's making a full loop. Can you just undo it? I'll stick my leg, present my leg to you. Yeah. That'll be the easiest way. Can you reach or do I need to come down? Chris Cassidy in the suit with the red stripes. Uh ingressing or entering the portable foot restraint that gets him in a good position right in front of the battery that he needs to remove from the pallet that's right in front of him marked with uh, HTV9 you see there at the top of your screen that pallet being delivered on the uh, H2 transfer vehicle okay, thank you am, am I uh, You're good. my feet clear yep Cut me that. Just adjusted my cooling to uh, six. If, if uh, ground folks are keeping score. Copy uh, TCV of six, Chris. All right, my my heels feel in and secure. Okay, Chris. With that, uh, make sure the ingress aid is tucked in. Your tethers are clear, and we'll take a serial number on that battery. Zero zero two six. This is serial number. Others look clear. Ingress 8 is tucked in. Copy, good serial number and checks. You can attach a RET to the battery H1 scoop and then uh, get the PGT out. Copy that. One is 
Copy. GT coming out. The settings are Alpha 7, Counter 2. I'll pass counterclockwise to Alpha 7, second motor. Alpha 7, counterclockwise to ready to drive. Okay, you're going to H2. You'll confirm the socket tape line flush and release H2 approximately 19 turns. Okay, copy that. Driving. Cassidy now using that cordless power drill, the PGT pistol grip tool, uh, undoing one of the bolts containing the lithium ion battery, the new lithium ion battery uh, from the uh, proper slot on the external pallet. He'll be removing that and uh, handing it off to Banken, who's situated on the truss segment of the International Space Station. He attached something called a scoop. Uh, this is a, simply a handling aid. Once the battery is removed, he can easily maneuver the battery uh, that uh, exceeds 400 pounds over to uh, Banken, who is situated again on the truss. Indicators in unlocked. Copy. You can stow the PGT back on your swing arm and remove the battery when ready. Copy that. All set, Bob. I am all set. GT stowed. Hands on the battery. Copy, and as you hand this off to Bob, you're looking to hand him the H2 scoop with a red swap. Copy, H2. Now, rotating, Bob. H2 uh, refers to a specific bolt uh, on the uh, lithium-ion battery, so Banken knows which end to grab. The RET being referred to as a retractable equipment tether, just making sure that uh, the battery is secured at all times. I've got the, the battery. You've got the battery. I'm reaching my RET. Angle. Okay, Brits off. You're. I've got the battery, and I'm ready to start. Of course. Remind me with that safety tether stuff. Is my arm You're going in front of the APFR or behind? Your safety tether is going in front of okay. the APFR right now. Copy, thanks. So you might have to. I might have to do. Pass it over the top of it. Yeah. You're right up on top of your anchor point. It's difficult sometimes to. Yeah, it's almost like that. Should be one handrail yeah, over. Yeah, be one handrail over. All right. A little more 
Chris, you can move that green hook if you'd like. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. You got a second? I do. Yep. Cassidy now out of the foot restraint. Uh, he'll reconfigure his tethers here, making sure they're both in a good position. Bankin and Cassidy will guide the uh, lithium-ion battery over to its new home on the integrated electronics assembly of the Starbert truss. There's a new foot restraint over there waiting for them, configured to the proper settings. And from there, they'll uh, be able to uh, get into a position where the new battery can be installed on the truss. I have control, and I'm going to need a minute to clear up my BRT and no problem. You have control of the battery? I do. I'm in a good spot. I have the battery. You have the battery. It's a little bit tricky to get past the pallet here. <laughs> yeah, just kind of keeping it on that side. Yeah. I have control of the battery. You have control of the battery. Communication is the key here as Cassidy and Bacon work together to move the more than 400 pound battery over to uh, the integrated electronics assembly. From here it'll be installed to uh, store power from the station's solar arrays. Uh, Bob Bankin will be the one to ingress or enter the foot restraint, get into position, and he'll grab the cordless power drill and secure it to the integrated electronics assembly. This uh, step we want is okay, I have control of the battery. You have control of the battery. Did you make it all the way to the T intersection? I did. See the fins in the blind mates? Yep. I'm gonna just knock that out right now. If you can map. Yep. Fins look straight. Blind mates uh, look clarified. Good uh, EMI band. Copy. Copy the checks on the battery. Probably need to get a little closer. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah, go to go to the 32. Yeah, sounds good. I've got the battery. You've got the battery. Let's 
see. I think I can keep can I put my anchor hand on this one there as well, you think? Or is that gonna scrunch you up too much? Um, I think it's gonna scrunch us up too yeah, much. Yeah, I think so too. Alright. I have control of the battery. Okay. Can you get a tether on it? I sure can, and you've got control back. I've got control. Tether in place. You have control, I'm going to release my feather. Copy that. Okay, Bob, before you get an APFR, if you can just make sure the gap spanner is clear of slot six for the install. The gap spanner is clear of uh, slot six. Copy. on the right. Get on the left. Okay, Bob, if you can check the uh, ingress aids tucked and tethers are clear, we'll take an inspection on the IA bolt interfaces and blind mate connectors. Okay, on the IEA side, the ingress aid is tucked. You can verify the uh, pins, are, or the pins are clear, there's no fog. A good EMI band and the pins look straight and clear as well. Copy. Uh, with that, when you're ready, Chris, you can transfer the battery to Bob, looking for H2 outboard. Okay, copy. I'm ready for the battery, Chris. Okay. Control, are you ready? I got control of the battery. You have control. I have the wreck. Let's see. Okay, once it's soft dock, Chris, you can transfer the, your PGT with the six inch. And uh, Jaws, in order to accomplish this uh, driving of H2, I'm going to roll back uh, to my left a click or so. Copy, Bob. I've got 
the PGT. You got it. Settings are Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Ready to drive volts, how many times? Okay, you'll confirm socket tape line flush to H2, looking for 16 to 17 turns. Tape line is flush, 16 to 17 turns, copy. Indicators moving. The battery's driving to me, huh, Chris? Yep, absolutely. Looking nice and smooth. Green light, 9.4, 16 turns. Copy and status indicator. Status indicator is locked. Copy, same settings, alpha 7, clockwise 2. You'll confirm socket tape lines flush to H1, looking for four to five and a half turns. Okay, and we're gonna have Chris drive H1. Four to five and a half turns. Tape on flush. Okay, feels in here. Confirmed. You got it. And here we go. Indicators moving. Lithium ion battery secured by one bolt to the integrated electronics assembly. Cassidy taking control of the cordless power drill to secure that final bolt. Indicator shows locked. Copy, and uh, Chris, you can stow that PGT back on your swing arm, and uh, Bob, you can release the RET. Okay, uh, Chris has the RET. Is that scoop going anywhere? I think just to clean up. I'll move it up to the bag, no sense in having a RET on it. And Yeah, Chris, if you're asking about the scoop, it just it just goes back to the bag for a setup for three Bravo. Okay. Yeah. And I will uh, egress and start working on moving the APFR. Copy. And uh, before that, we'll take a glove, half, and gauntlet check from both of you. Dry gauntlets in place and gloves on the levy one. My half is dry, my gauntlets are up, and uh, no change for my gloves. Copy, Bob. And as you said, you'll be moving that APFR over to width 18, clocking is 12. And let's see, should I go up the side here or go around? I think, I think, uh, right up. I think you can just go, go right up the side. Hand over in two here. seconds. Less than an hour into today's spacewalk and the lithium-ion battery has been installed onto the integrated electronics assembly. Leading the teams here in Mission Control Houston, Flight Director Royce Renfrew, you see at the forward end of your screen the voice you're hearing from Mission Control to Chris Cassidy and Bob Bankin, our two spacewalkers today, Jasmine Mogbelli, uh, call sign Jaws off to the left of your screen there, and Jackie Kagi in the back, uh, the spacewalk officer leading the teams here through the uh, procedures and uh, working with her teams in the back rooms uh, as we are already a little bit ahead of the timeline. Got out the door a little bit earlier than expected today. And uh, Cassidy and Bankin uh, looking good on consumables aspect as well. Their next task will be uh, the uh, swap of an old nickel hydrogen battery uh, that is on the um, 
the integrated electronics assembly with the uh, final adapter plate that's on the pallet. That adapter plate is needed uh, to uh, for the final configuration of the lithium-ion battery that they just installed. Limited and consumable is Medox on Chris at 640. You're approximately 10 minutes ahead on the timeline, and uh, just for your essay, both your Met rigs are looking really good today. Okay, copy in the, the scoop they had is now in uh, the true lock bag. Copy, and that was the H1 scoop, correct, on battery side? And read it to the, uh, the inboard one, which H1, yes. I agree, H1. Copy. I'm ready to the APFR, Jasmine. Okay, copy, Bob. And uh, clocking of eight uh, of 12 and with 18. The clocking of 12 and with 18. The clocking of uh, 12 is set. Twist test, good pull test on the APFR. Go back, go back to set on the uh, pitch. And the pitch knob is popped out. Copy. Remaining settings are Fox 12. Copy. Fox 12 is set. And Copy. Fox 12. Uh, and Bob, can you just. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask Bob, can you confirm the you locking collar is black on black? Well, sorry to interrupt. Can you confirm the locking collar? That's black on black. Copy and uh, copy that, Chris. Okay, Bob, with that, you can check the gap spanners clear of the battery and ingress to APFR. And Chris, you can retrieve the ratchet wrench and position yourself uh, on the radiator inboard corner and over to you if you want to go outboard and up and over or just straight up on the inboard side. I'm going to pause here, Chris, and uh, wait for you to go where you're going to go. Um, just so that uh, they don't trap their safety tether underneath me. Yeah, I think I need to be around. I can pause here if you want to ratchet wrench those free. Yeah, let me do that. All right, I'm on H1, Jasmine, with the ratchet wrench. Copy, if you can get, uh, can you read the serial number? I'll get that. Yep, uh, A-firm. I'll, I'll get it when I break H2. Okay, and uh, for H1, confirm socket tape line flush and okay. brake torque less than one turn. Socket tape line flush. Cassidy and Bankin setting up to remove an old nickel hydrogen battery from the station's truss. You see from the helmet camera view of Cassidy here, he's breaking torque on those bolts. And Chris, are you also in a position for H2, or is Bob going to get that? I, I am. I'm just going to do that. I wasn't sure if I slipped off the bolt, but it was actually the torque breaking, not the bolt slipping. H1. Okay, moving to H2. Serial number is 0089. Copy, good serial number. Again, two bolts uh, securing the nickel hydrogen battery to the station's truss. One uh, torque is broken, heading over to the other bolt to break that torque. It'll be Bob Bankin uh, entering the uh, portable foot restraint, getting into a good angle to use the cordless power drill, the PGT, to uh, remove 
the old nickel hydrogen battery from the station's truss. They'll then guide it back over to the pallet for disposal and to swap it with the position of an adapter plate that they'll bring into this slot. Okay, Bob, I'm going to slide down this side and then go. Okay. One forward. If I'm going to not forget my waist to there. That's kind of self teaching. <laughs> okay, feet coming first, Bob. Let me know. Are you clear? Clear. Watch yourself. You've got the ingress aid to your BRT again. As Bankin and Cassidy get into position to uh, remove this nickel hydrogen battery, the station is flying 270 statute miles over the South Indian Ocean, entering into an orbital nighttime. You'll start to see the views from their helmet cameras get just a little bit darker. Bob, once you're in, if you could check your ingress aids tucked, tethers are clear, and then you'll attach a ret to the H1 scoop. H1 scoop. Okay. Ingress aid is tucked. I've got a ret to the H1 scoop. Copy, and PGT settings are alpha 7, counter 2. Seven counter two. You'll be going to H one. Confirm socket tape line flush. Looking for eight turns to release the battery. I'll be H one for eight turns. Looks flush. Here we go. Indicators moving. There's eight turns. The indicator indicates unlocked. Copy. Same settings. Alpha 7, counter 2 for H2. Confirm the socket tape line's flush. Looking for 19 turns. The socket tape line is flush. Understand 19 turns. A firm. Battery's moving. I agree. Indicator's moving. It's coming out nicely. Okay, you got the PGT. Yeah. Seems like 
three hops of the uh, the bull. Yep. It's very standard. And so Bob, GGT is stored. I'm going to go back around. Copy, Bob. Could you say the turns on that? It was uh, about eight. I just turned it to the full uh, 17 turns, and it clicked about three times. Copy. You know the indicator. I could feel it. And you are uh, about to go into a night pass for your essay. That's in your feet. As the station uh, moves into an orbital nighttime, that uh, nickel hydrogen battery is removed. Hand off H2 to Chris, and we've got a handover in about 30 seconds. Okay, Bob, I'm in position. Copy. Do a complete flip. It's work. A little bit. Now in another handover, again, we will periodically lose video and audio from station uh, incrementally throughout today's spacewalk as the station orbits uh, orbits the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. We're handing off uh, to the geosynchronous satellites that are stationed around the Earth at 23,000 miles away. Jasmine Mogbelli on the left here, call sign JAWS. You're hearing her voice to uh, Chris Cassidy and Bob Behnken. Now outside the space station with the uh, nickel hydrogen battery removed, the final uh, nickel hydrogen battery to be removed from the station's truss. I have control back, and I'm I'm in a good spot below your feet now. Okay. They're handing uh, the battery off to one another. We'll gently guide it over to uh, the external pallet. There, they'll perform a swap. There's an adapter plate uh, in a slot. They'll swap the adapter plate with the nickel hydrogen battery. Install the nickel hydrogen battery uh, to the external pallet for disposal, and bring the adapter plate to where the nickel hydrogen battery once was. That adapter plate uh, uh, completes the configuration of the lithium-ion battery to the station's truss. Actually go outboard a little bit. And that will be the final task for the uh, battery swaps and uh, will complete the 1B channel. Oh, okay. Right, when, uh, I think I had you lock out your rack. You could uh, unlock it if you want, but I've got control of the battery. You have control. I'm in a good spot. If you want to go, I have control in the rail. You want to go all the way to the rail? Okay. You have control. I'll go all the way to the rail. One more hand drill. I have control of the battery. Okay, you have control of the battery. Control the battery. Okay, you have control of the battery. Yeah, 
we control the battery? We have control of the battery. Mm -hmm. Find something good to hold on to. Maybe really. yeah. a weird spot. Yeah, I have control of the battery. You have control. You have control of the battery. You have control of the battery. Control the battery. You have control of the battery. I have control of the battery. You have control of the battery. Can you reach without any hassle to flip the GoPro and point it towards the pallet or no? If it's easy, uh, a little bit of a mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, I have control of the battery. Right. I have control of the battery. I have control of the battery. Okay, you have control of the battery. Pretty close. I have control of the battery. You have control of the battery. I just passed your BRT spot. Okay, well, let's want to leave it up here towards the MLI. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is that yeah. I oh, agree. All right, let me get my hand in this spot. Okay, I have control of the battery. You have control of the battery. That MLI multi-layer insulation, Cassidy and Bankin just uh, working on maneuvering the battery and uh, communication is key here, especially in an orbital nighttime as they guide it to its uh, new home on the external pallet for disposal. I've got control of the battery. All right, for your ret, your ret time. Yep. Still have control. Okay. I have a ret, and I have control. Okay. And Chris, you Come are on. go to ingress the APFR. Let me go to ingress the APFR. Here I go. Okay. 
and Chris for this one. Uh, once you're in, check uh, access to tools in addition to the ingress aid tucked and tethers clear. Access to tools in addition to the ingress aid. Copy that. You'll spill in, ingress aid is tucked. I can get the tools. Okay, copy, Chris. Uh, with that, once you're ready, Bob, you'll be handing H2 off to Chris, and Chris, you're going to want your BRT RET on the battery tether point. I just can't reach the battery tether for you. I'll fix it later. I I am I am ready, Bob. Okay. You have, have control. Okay, you have control of the battery. I'll release my rep. My rep has been released. Okay, copy that. And Chris, you'll want the H2 scoop in your BRT. Okay. Okay, the red config is, as you suggested, BRT red on the middle. Copy. BRT tabs are out. Copy. Once you've got that stowed out of the way, you'll attach a red to the adapter plate heater mat tether point. Copy, you can retrieve the ratchet wrench with the hex driver, and you'll be going to H1 first. Ratchet hex H1. You're looking for a one line flush. One line. One line is flush. Okay, you can break torque. Broken. Copy. H2, same thing, confirm one line flush. One line flush, torque broken. Copy, you can tend the ratchet wrench back to the ORU bag and then retrieve the PGT with the hex driver. PGT with the hex driver. Okay, settings are alpha seven, right. counter two. Seven counterclockwise two is set. Motor. Copy. You'll be going to H one. Confirm one line flush. Looking to release approximately eight turns. One line flush. 
Eight turns. Here we go. For those just tuning in, Chris Cassidy is uh, in the portable foot restraint right in front of the adapter plate. Uh, he's broken torque on that adapter plate and now uh, unbolting it from the external pallet. Uh, Bob Benkin is standing by with the old nickel hydrogen battery that's going to take its place in that same slot. First, they need to remove this adapter plate, though. Uh, Cassidy working on the first of two bolts. For H2, looking for one line flush again. Alpha, seven, counter, two, one line is flush. Looking to release approximately 19 turns. Copy 19, four for 19. Eighteen. 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 Turns. It's definitely three. Okay. You can power right. that PGT off to the left and then send it back to the ORU bag. PGT is off. Send it back. Comes the Nerf football. Copy, and uh, as you hand this off, Bob, you're going to put your BIT RET to the adapter plate handrail tether oh. point. I can't see, Bob, if I've got the right side. I think okay. it's the right side. Yep, I've got the correct side now. Okay. I've got a rep to it, and I've got it on my BRT. Okay. Agree with my rep coming off? I agree with your rep coming off. It's all yours. Okay. Okay, Bob, once you've got that stowed on your BRT, you can head back towards the IEA. Chris, for you, make sure your ingress aid is tucked, and then you can retrieve that battery from your BRT. You want H2 in your left hand. Ingress aid tucked, H2 left hand. Copy that. Right. This is Mission Control Houston. For those just tuning in, Cassidy and Bankin have successfully performed the swap. The old nickel hydrogen battery is in the hands of Chris Cassidy, now working to uh, install it onto the external pallet for uh, disposal. In the meantime, Bob Bankin has the uh, adapter plate. He's going to attach it to his body restraint tether and uh, guide it over to the integrated electronics assembly. The installation of that adapter plate will be the final step here for the uh, upgrades to the 1B channel. In the meantime, Cassidy working on that uh, pistol grip tool, the cordless power drill, uh, bolting that old nickel hydrogen into place. Looking for 16 to 17 turns. Copy that. Rocket tape line flush. Everything looks lined up. Drive it. Indicators moving. Two turns for 19. Fixed. Indicator moving. Battery going in. Everything feels smooth. Very low running torque. Copy. Ten turns. Sixteen and a half turns, nine point one foot pounds. The indicator is all the way in the lock position. The battery hooks in. 
Copy and green light. Green torquing light, sorry about that. Okay, Chris, uh, with that, you can release the RET and stow that PGT back on your swing arm, and you'll retrieve the scoops and stow them on your mini workstation. We have a good installation of that nickel hydrogen battery to the external pallet. Cassidy now removing those scoops, those handling aids. He'll take care of those as Bob, Bob Bankin continues to make his way with the adapter plate towards the uh, integrated electronics assembly uh, for its installation onto the truss. Copy. And Cassidy working on those steps to uh, Clean up his work site over at the external pallet. Yeah, gap scanner is cleared of the uh, slot five. Copy. And I will have access to the PGT. Okay, with that, you can ingress the APFR, check the ingress aids tucked and tethers are clear, and then we'll take an inspection of the IA bolt interfaces and blind mate connectors. Copy. I have both scoops, and I'm ready to translate battery echo, I believe. That's correct, battery echo. And Chris, both of those are going to go uh, at the 3 o'clock, which is handrails away from the EP wheels. Away from the EP wheels, okay. I'm on the pallet. Copy. You're clear, Bricks are on. Copy. Okay, guys, on the uh, pallet side, looks like a good. EMI band and no fault in the connectors. I will have to uh, get the, retrieve the adapter plate and then give you an inspection of that. Good words, Bob. And on the adapter plate, good EMI band pins are clear on the pallet side. Copy, Bob. And you want the adapter plate blind mate connectors oriented station outboard, and then you can soft dock. Copy, station outboard. H1 and H2 are installed. With it away from the EP wheels, 3 o'clock. Copy, Chris. Uh, with that, you can head to the ORU bag and stow the PGT and ratchet wrench in there, and you're going to be taking it uh, with you onto structure. Roger.
This is a view from the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy uh, continuing to clean up his work site over at the external pallet. He just uh, finished up the installation of the old nickel hydrogen battery. Uh, one more step to complete. That's over at uh, Bob Bankin's workstation. CGT with hex driver settings are Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Happy Alpha 7, clockwise 2. The adapter plate is soft up. Copy, and with that, you'll be going to H2, confirm one line flush. Bingen, already on that last step, you heard that confirmation that the adapter plate is soft docked. Soft docked. Now he just uh, needs to install it using that uh, cordless power drill. There's two bolts to secure it to uh, the truss. Uh, he'll do one bolt at a time here. Okay, both uh, Ratchet and PGT are in the bag. Chris, one line flush on H2. Copy, Here Chris. And uh, Bob, you're looking for 16 to 17 turns. Copy, 16 to 17 turns. Chris, for you, you'll take that bag with you onto structure. Roger. Bag, new structure. Everything, even another one's over. Nothing remaining, no scoops, except for the ones on E that are supposed to be there. Copy. Coming out. You can 16 turns, 9.5 on the torque and a green light. Copy, Bob. That you can, same settings, Alpha 7, clockwise 2. For H1. And for H1, looking for two lines visible, one of them flush. Two lines visible, one of them flush. And say, give them the number of turns. Four and a half to five and a half. Okay, Jasmine, I'm ready to drop the bag. Okay, Chris, uh, you're looking to stow that. Uh, recommend handrail 2003 uh, or given location. And you'll also make sure the ingress aid is stowed toward the boot plate and tethers are clear to prepare for the EP translation. Okay, copy all. It's all, all in work. H1 was four and a half turns. 9.0 and a green light. Copy, Bob. Good install. You can release the RET, uh, egress the APFR, and tend that PGT back towards the crew lock bag, and then we'll be working TA clamps. And with that, Bankin successfully installed the adapter plate to the uh, truss segment. Is on 2003. Copy, Chris. Cassidy's just working on stowing some of his equipment over on the external pallet. Bankin's next task is to uh, use some connectors to uh, make sure everything is uh, power is connected, the adapter plate and then lithium-ion battery and get that uh, new lithium-ion battery configured to start storing power from the station solar arrays on the starboard truss. Get out of the way for Doug. Chris, you can, uh, you can, once you've got the uh, ingress aid stowed and your tethers are clear and you're five feet clear, I'd head towards back towards the IA to take closeout photos. And uh, you can, once you're five feet clear, give Doug the go to the back off position. Copy. Ingress aid is against the boot plate and in, uh, in the shortest position. I don't know what you call it. Retracted. Copy.
Okay, Colonel Hurley, I am uh, five feet away, more than that. ATFR is clear, tethers are clear, we're clear, you have a go to move. Copy, Captain Cassidy, we'll move the uh, EP to the side two back off position. That's your feet, Bob. Yeah, at my feet, copy. And uh, Chris, sounds like you're back at the IA. We'll take a glove, half, and gauntlet check. Up dry. Gauntlet's in place, gloves good. Copy, Chris. And uh, Chris, you can either help uh, Bob with the uh, TA clamps and adapter plate connectors. Um, and then after that, we're going to be working on closeout photos. Closeout photos. I'll be there. I'll make my way to the camera, uh, Bob. Happy? Now, uh, Jasmine, which uh, every battery, if my entire face of the IEA, is that the general uh, concept for the pictures? The entire face, Chris. Yep, copy. Longer till daylight, Jasmine. Approximately three and a half minutes till daylight. Maybe uh, I'll hold off on the pictures. For... Yeah, Chris, if you actually, um, if that PGT with the hex driver is by the crew lock bag, if you want to stow the hex driver on the pit pin red in the crew lock bag, uh, in the meantime, now would be a good time to do that. Ready for it? Yep. Thank you. A lot of progress made so far during today's spacewalk, just an hour and 43 minutes in. Uh, the adapter plate and the new lithium-ion battery are installed onto the Inter uh, International Space Station's truss. Bob Bankin just working on making some of those final connections. Cassidy has already cleaned up his work site at the external pallet. Doug Hurley on the inside of the station is working the uh, station's robotic arm and actually maneuvering that pallet away from the work site, uh, no longer uh, needed for the rest of the, today's uh, spacewalk. Some cleanup activities for this 1B channel, and of course the connections need to be made to, uh, to finalize the upgrades to that 1B channel. Three new lithium-ion batteries with adapter plates installed. And that PGT is eventually going to go back on Bob's swing arm uh, once he's done with the adapter plate connectors. Again, an hour and 44 minutes into today's spacewalk, already making good progress and nearing completion of the 1B channel. You can get this gap spanner on this side. Yep, you can uh, go ahead and work the gap spanners. Okay, good uh, EMI band and uh, pins and on both sides, cable and the jack are both verified. Copy, you're go to mate P4 to J4. And just make sure that gap spanner is clear and board away. Copy. The gap spanner is uh, well clear. Copy. Okay, P4 to J4 is mated. 
copy Bob, and the uh, lever's over center. You can then connect that connector cap back onto J4, and the three PA clamps will need to be closed on this one. Okay, copy. Okay, all three TA clamps are closed. Copy, Bob. And Bob, did you already install that connector cap on J4? Not yet. Copy. I'm right there at the location now. Okay, the connector cap is on J4. Copy, Bob. Um, with that, you can head back to the crew lock bag to retrieve your PGT. And you're going to stow that on your swing arm, and just please let us know what tethers are on it. Chris, can you uh, have a look at my, my safety tether? Uh, yeah, let's see. So I'm over the top of you. It's clear from your feet, I mean, from your hip, and then. Okay. So I might need to go inboard to you for you to deconflict. See, what I'm going to do is I'll just rotate this way and come in here. And uh, let's see, you've collected that gap spanner. Yep, I got the gap spanner. Okay. I might as well put a why don't, would you, why don't I just get on the inboard side of you? Okay. Now's a good time to, for me to do that. If you agree. Seems okay to me. Okay. And then it'll be complete. I'll collect the scoops off of the uh, 
ECU here. Okay. Copy. There we go, Bubba. Need to put it. Okay. So, didn't get any pictures yet. Okay. So I got that. That's good. Yeah. And Chris, when you do take those photos, um, if you can get pictures of those bumper guides as well that you guys think the black smudging might be coming from, that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, let's see. Any way you can rotate your feet a little bit this way? Um, board or outboard? Yeah. But outboard. Okay. Yep. Sorry. No problem. And um, trying to figure out where's a good place for me to come up. Well, I'm about to have these scoops. And then you'll move left. And then I'll be going to the crew lock bag. Okay. okay. I'll just hang out right here. Yeah, then I'm going to pick up the uh, GoPro. Say again, Chris? I'm going to pick up the GoPro camera. Okay, copy. This is uh, Mission Control Houston, one hour, 53 minutes into today's spacewalk. Bob Benkin and Chris Cassidy are just wrapping up their work on the 1B power channel, successfully installing the new lithium-ion battery and the uh, new adapter plate and removing a nickel-hydrogen battery and making all the necessary connections. Now just working on some closeout procedures, uh, gathering all of their uh, handling aids and uh, cordless power drills and all of the other equipment that they used for these procedures, uh, cleaning up and taking some photos of the work site, making sure everything uh, went according to plan. The next item on the agenda, agenda is to continue to clean up this work site, and uh, they'll actually get a jump start on the 3B power channel. They won't be uh, swapping out some batteries quite yet. There's still some uh, work from the ground to uh, configure the batteries for removal and to, uh, and to start that channel. But they'll uh, install some of the handling aids that you see in the view right now from the helmet camera of Bob Benkin. They'll break some torque on some of the batteries and just really get a jump start on some of the work that's uh, coming up later this month to uh, upgrade the final power channel of the International Space Station. Okay, so I'm, uh, I've got the two scoops returned to the Kulak bag. 
that we're on the uh, DCSU. Copy, Bob. Looks like there's one more down there. Okay, from there should be one more on battery six, H2. I can get it, I'm right here. And I believe there's still one more gap spinner deployed. Retrieve my PPT, and I have uh, two RETs in series, as well as an adjustable tether on that PPT. Copy, Bob. And Bob will take glove, hat, and gauntlet check on you. This is Mission Control Houston. In another handover of some of that uh, video and audio from station through the tracking and data relay satellites, this is a live view of the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The teams here leading Chris Cassidy and Bob Bankin through the procedures of the spacewalk today. Flight director there in the uh, gray suit is Royce Renfrew leading the Orbit 2 teams today. In the back right there, Jackie Kagey, the spacewalk officer, uh, knowing those procedures uh, backwards and forwards. And that voice you're hearing to the crew is uh, Jasmine Mogbelli. It goes by call sign Jaws over there on the left of your screen. Copy. Okay, so remaining test is that uh, inboard gap spanner chain the scoop on battery 6H2, and then verifying that PVR pit pin engagement. You can see the pit pin right here. Engaged. Copy engaged. I'll get it when I leave. <laughs> And then, can I give you the uh, app spanner? Uh, yeah. The first one? One by one. Okay. Got to find a rep in this bag. So many that there's none. Some of the tools you're seeing here from the helmet camera of Bob Bankin, he's uh, working on putting away some of the uh, equipment he used for the uh, upgrades of the 1B channel. Some of them include uh, scoops. These are those uh, silver handling aids that you see sort of sticking out of the bag, as well as the uh, jumbled cables. Those are called gap spanners. You can connect them across the integrated truss and make it a little bit easier to get from one side to the other, making a translation or the movement from one side to the other uh, a little bit easier. Floating there in the uh, background is the, uh, you can see that white box with a black circle that is uh, the still photography, the um, DSLR camera that they use to take some of the closeout photos of their work site after they've uh, completed the upgrades to the 1B channel. Again, Bankin and uh, Cassidy cleaning up their work site, uh, getting ready to go over to the 3B channel and get a head start on some of the tasks there. In the bag. Copy. Um, yeah, AFIRM, the only thing I have remaining is that remaining gap spanner. And then if you guys can just check, we're clear of tools and tethers and take those closeout photos. Does it make sense for me to collect this trash bag at this time? Checking. 
Um, Bob, you don't need it at this time. We were planning to get the one from the ORU bag prior to the H fixture. Do I have to get anything else out of the ORU bag prior to the H fixture? Negative, just the contingency tools, Bob. So if you'd rather take that trash bag now, you can. Okay. I've retrieved the trash bag. It's on my mini workstation. Copy. Chris, or to get it here in a second. Uh, if you can take the pictures on the outboard side, I can get this gap spanner. That work? This is Mission Control Houston. As Cassidy and Bankin continue to uh, gather their tools, clean up the work side of the 1B channel, we did get confirmation. EVA limiting consumable is Medox on Chris at 645, and you're approximately 25 minutes ahead. Okay. Uh, get the pictures, I have to leave the crew off back here. So maybe it's, uh, you want me to? If you could just release the end of that, uh, you just release the end of that. I will. Yeah, it's better, and then I'll take it. Okay. So as Cassidy and Bankin continue to clean up the work site, we did get confirmation that there is a good checkout of that final lithium-ion battery. The 1B channel on the Starbucks 6 truss is up and running, completed. And so big picture for both of you, once you uh, finish that gap spanner and the closeout photos, Chris, you'll be heading back to the ORU bag with the camera and GoPro, and we'll take an inventory. And then, Bob, you'll be taking that crew lock bag and bundling it to the APFR. Okay. Okay. Comes the, uh, and you ready for me to release this in? I am ready for you to release that end. Bingo. Camera's up there by you, right? It is, huh? Okay. Come in your way.
right, ready for the camera. You can release the rip. Okay. Have the camera. I have the camera. And then I have both cameras. Now, uh, half of half of the IEA with GoPro, and I'll start the uh, digital camera survey right now. Copy, Chris. Hey, uh, Jasmine, I've got the inventory for the Kulak bag. I've got a ret to a gap spanner chain with a wire tie, a second ret to a gap spanner chain with a wire tie, a third gap spanner chain with a wire tie on an integral ret. I've got a adjustable and an integral ret with two scoops. Got a additional ret with a gap spanner chain uh, and a wire tie that's integrated. I've got a ret with a pit pin with a nine inch hex extension. I've got a long duration tie down tether with an integral ret that is uh, attached to the, not an integral ret, but it's, uh, to a, one of the D rings inside the uh, Kulak bag. I've got a ratchet wrench a palm wheel and a six inch uh, wobble socket with uh, two rets. Got an additional adjustable attached to one of the integral rets and then another integral ret attached to an adjustable and that one has two scoops on it. The interior contents. Good config for the inside of the Krulak bag. Up. Okay. I'm having the same issue with the button, Jasmine. I can't tell if I'm actually getting pictures, but I have confirmed that every 30 seconds the green light comes on. Copy, Chris. Again, Bankin and Cassidy continuing to uh, clean up the 1B worksite. The 1B channel is uh, outfitted with three new lithium-ion batteries all up and running. 1B uh, channel uh, really complete at this point. From the rest of the spacewalk on uh, will be a lot of uh, prep work for for future spacewalks, including uh, getting some uh, a little bit of work done ahead of time before the work on the 3B channel on the other side of the S6 truss, as well as a lot of get-aheads that have been on the to-do list. Copy, Chris. Uh, we'll take the GoPro photos. While they're continuing to uh, clean up their work site, we'll take a few questions using the hashtag AskNASA. Please uh, ask away throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. This first one comes from Francisco, asking how long the spacewalk will take overall. The majority of the tasks have already been uh, completed for the uh, upgrades to the 1B channel. Again, fully up and running, a lot of get-ahead tasks. Spacewalks are usually scheduled for about six and a half hours, uh, really scheduled around the time for limiting consumables such as carbon dioxide scrubbing. So ballpark uh, will be around that time frame. Another question from Stephen, who's asking what happens to the old nickel hydrogen battery. 
that old nickel hydrogen battery is on the external pallet. We still need to complete the 3B channel. A lot of the old batteries from that side will go also onto the external pallet. That external pallet for HTV-9 will eventually uh, be jettisoned from the uh, space station to eventually burn up in the atmosphere. The uh, HTV-8 pallet uh, will be returned by the HTV-9 vehicle uh, for disposal in the atmosphere. You going outboard? Or yeah. Inboard? I'm going to go down. Right. Trying to get the deep pictures? Yeah, just the, the battery uh, one, two area. Stuff in that bag. Yeah. yeah. I'm finally ready to get out of your way. No problem. And Bob, when you get a chance, we've lost your WVS. If you can check the button. Okay, I'll, uh, if it's okay, I'll check it at the APFR. Is that okay? Absolutely. I think there's a green light. It's hard to see in the sunlight. Hey, from we've got your WBS back. Thanks, Bob. I think it was on. I just cycled it. I don't know. Copy.
In the background, you can see Chris Cassidy with uh, camera in hand as Ben can uh, continue some of the cleanup work on the 1B channel. Again, the uh, 1B channel fully outfitted with three new lithium ion batteries up and running. Bankin and uh, Cassidy completed the work for that channel. Now the rest of the spacewalk will be dedicated to uh, uh, much of the get-ahead tasks that were originally scheduled uh, between these two spacewalks. With that, you can bring that camera with you. I believe you've already got the GoPro and uh, take those back to the ORU bag, stow them, and then we'll take an inventory of the ORU bag. And Chris, if you want to keep either the camera or GoPro on you by stowing them in the RU bag, that's an option as well. Okay, Captain. Hey, Doug, I've got the uh, crew lock bag bundled to the APFR. Bob, I'm going to shoot that gap between the. Okay. Copy, Bob. And with that, you can retrieve that APFR bundle, and you'll be translating to three Bravo. Let me know if you want the step-by-step uh, -step directions. Okay. Yeah, collect it up, and then uh, I'll check with you about my route. Copy. How are my feet? My feet are doing okay, Bob. Yep, your feet are doing okay. With that, the work at the 1B uh, channel is complete. Cassidy and Benke will now make their way to the other side of the S6 truss. You see Cassidy in the suit with the red stripes already making his way down. I'm in board of Bob and I'm heading to the for you, Benke. Copy, Chris. The wave. away from bank and uh, 260 statute miles over the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. As Cassidy and Bankin uh, continue to clean up here and move on to their next, next task at the uh, 3B channel, get some of the work done ahead of time, um, breaking torque on some bolts and installing some uh, handling aids in preparation for the work to be done later this month, continue to ask questions to us using the hashtag AskNASA. We have one from Micah who's asking, when changing batteries, what are some parts of the International Space Station that are turned off? As you can imagine, there are quite a few nearing the uh, solar arrays. The solar arrays themselves uh, are always angled towards the sun, but are turned off uh, for this spacewalk. Also, the thrusters on the outside are disabled for the duration of the spacewalk. Let me, let me know when you're ready. We are ready, uh, Bob, as long as you're good for a pause and calm. I am good for a pause and calm. Okay, Chris, go ahead. On the outside of the bag, there's a, a round scoop. Normal, small, small, adjustable, and a large, small, adjustable. Copy, sounds good for the uh, external config. Inside of the bag, there's a piston ret and a regular ret on standby for the H mixture with nothing on them. Copy. All right. 
is a trash bag that has a rent and an adjustable. Copy. That's the extra adjustable. Extra adjustable. There is a rent connected to an adjustable tether that has two items, a two puller and a pry bar. Copy. There's a ratchet wrench that has a palm wheel, a nine inch, seven through seven, six feet, six driver, and two rats in series. Copy. A PGT with a nine inch hex driver, an adjustable on one side, and two rats in series on the other side. Copy and good battery on that. There is a battery and the position of the on off switch is off. Okay, Chris, that sounds like a good config, uh, just other than the camera and GoPro that are on you. All right, let's do that in a second. And Bob, looks like you're on the go. You're headed to WIF 29 on the three Bravo side. Copy, WIF uh, 29 on the three Bravo side. The camera has a RET and an L bracket assembly. That's with me still. Copy. And the GoPro has a RET to a mutt end defector, and the L bracket assembly is connected to the mutt end defector. Copy. And uh, with that, Chris, um, you can retrieve the APFR, and you'll leave that ORU bag on 2003 where it's stowed. Okay. Copy that. Beautiful uh, view of the forward part of the space station. Hey, firm and Chris, you'll also be picking up your green hook. Green hook APFR, leave the ORU bag on 2003. Copy all. Hey, firm. Where where are you right now? I'm on the uh, 3B side. Copy that. From the helmet camera of Bob Banking, you're getting a sneak peek at some of the uh, work, or at least the work site, where uh, Banking and Cassidy will go out once again to complete this channel. I've arrived at with 29. Copy, and the APFR will go in at a clocking of 12. Right now, Banken and Cassidy are just really doing a lot of, uh, as much work as they can ahead of time uh, to minimize some of the prep work before they start swapping out batteries at the end of the month. Copy. Banken has a portable foot restraint in tow. He'll insert it into that gold structure right there. And the two will work hand-in-hand uh, hand to install some scoops or handling aids on some of the batteries, making them easier to pull out and hold, and uh, as well as breaking some torque on some of the batteries that they uh, will need to remove again later this month. Hooked onto the red Urkham reel. Copy. And while I'm looking at it, both are in the unlocked position, and the yellow hook is still... Closed and locked. Copy, Chris. Good consent. Okay, 
written on the APFR. The APFR is installed at 12 for the clocking, black on black, good pull test and good uh, twist test. Copy, Bob. Looking for a pitch of Quebec, Quebec. Okay, Quebec, Quebec is set. And I'll uh, take the rest of the APFR settings after I choose the crew like that. Copy. And uh, can you confirm pitch knobs popped out? Yeah, the pitch knob has popped out. Copy. Same uh, stickiness felt on the uh, release mechanism. Copy, Chris. And Chris, you'll be translating to the three Bravo side handrail 2021. Let me know if you want step by step. I'm going just a little bit inboard. Down, down that edge. A firm inboard to handrail 2003, and then the A frame across. Copy. And Chris, at handrail 2015, you'll translate outboard, and you want to go over the FRGF to S6 with 6. And you want to route your tether clear of that FRGF pin and grapple shaft. Am I going uh, inboard of the A-frame or outboard? Outboard. I'll take the APFR settings now, Jason. Fox 12. Okay, Fox 12 is set. Copy, and uh, Bob, if you can just make sure the ingress aid is stowed. I see you've got your crew lock bag, and you can head to the radiator side. The ingress aid is stowed. Copy. All right, Jasmine, I'm on the other side and looking for the... Uh, Directions again, one more time. Copy. So at handrail 2015, you can be begin translating back outboard. You'll go over the FRGF to width six, and you want to route your tether clear of the FRGF pin and grapple shaft. And ultimately, you're heading to handrail 2021, where you'll drop your green hook. We have a handover in 15 seconds.
Once again, in a short handover of video and audio from the station, again, we'll be regaining it uh, very shortly. This is the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room. The Orbit 2 team here, led by uh, Royce Renfrew, the flight director of Orbit 2, guiding our two spacewalking astronauts uh, through some of the procedures of uh, upgrading the 1B channel which is now complete. The 1B channel uh, outfitted with three new lithium-ion batteries all up and running and ready to go. Cassidy and Banken uh, scheduled to upgrade this 1B channel over the course of two spacewalks. That work now complete. Now uh, getting a series of get-aheads uh, done in preparation for some of the work later this month on the 3B channel. That'll be the last channel to upgrade with lithium-ion batteries aboard the International Space Station. And back with you after the handover. Back with you after the handover. Copy. And Chris, you should be coming up on Handrail 2021. Bob, for you, looking to stow that crew lock bag on handrails 2050 and 2055. Copy, 2050 and 2055. See you there, Rick, coming over the top, Chris coming over the top. Yep. And uh, 2021. So we can maybe look at the uh, debrief whether there's a better Translation path. I find that one pretty ugly. Mine was too. Copy for both of you. All right, Jasmine, I'm uh, looking at whip six. Okay, Chris, you'll drop your green hook at handrail 2021. And uh, for the WIF, APFR will be yep, a firm clocking of six. Clocking of six. Twelve on the double line. Six on the single line. Twelve on the double line. A firm. Okay, handrails uh, 2055 and 2050, the crew lock bag. Okay, Bob, you can retrieve the gap spanner change from the crew lock bag. We'll be deploying those. Okay. And Jasmine, I think you said the uh, tether hook should go over the for GF, right? A, A from over. Is it is it under? I can put it wherever you want. There, it's over. Yep, over. Thanks. And green hook going to two zero two one. A firm.
It's taken me a while, Bob, to join you. No, it's uh, taken me a while as well. Green Hook is deposited on 2021. Copy, Chris. And uh, if we get lock and collar black on black, good pull twist test. And then I've got the remaining APFR settings. I'm still tethered to it. And uh, I see black on black. Pull tug wiggle in all directions. Passes. Copy. Remaining settings are India, Golf, India. Golf, Golf, 12. Okay, uh, you'll just need to change the okay. pitch to India, India. India, yeah, India. And Chris and Bob, just for your SA, you guys are still ahead on the timeline overall. Copy. Copy. Fox 12, right, Jasmine? India, India, Fox 12. Hey, firm. And uh, Chris, we were able to just yes, check that pitch knob popped out. And, uh, Chris, we were able to just... It's out. Copy. Say again, Bob. I think I'd like to put some scoops out to get some additional handrails over here. Okay. Uh, can you give me the uh, scoop locations? Hey, firm, we have two going to battery one. Let me know when you're ready for the clockings. Battery one, okay, and the battery one should be uh, to my top right, correct? A firm, the top right battery. And it looks like the scoops are a point down. A firm, both H1 and H2 will be at 9 o'clock, which is straight down. H2 will be at 9 o'clock, which is straight down. Installed on H2. Copy. That pitch knob is a little sticky as well. I just had to verify that it was out. It was popped out, but it's hard to tell. Copy that, Chris. And Chris, you'll want the uh, ingress aid stowed, and then you can head over to the 3 Bravo IAA. Chris, it is still going to Bob. Copy. And Chris, as you translate, you'll want to go over the Canon connector bank. You mean with my tether? From the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy, he just completed uh, his work uh, stowing a portable foot restraint. He is now working on translating or moving over to the uh, 3B Power Channel worksite. That's where Bob Banking currently is. He's again uh, getting some work done ahead of time. Anything they can to uh, limit the prep work needed for later this month. He's installing scoops or handling aids. Cassidy is uh, on his way to join him and uh, continue some of the prep work. Um, I think the next thing is uh, gap spanners uh, or scoops, and so we've got the battery 4 H1, I think she said. Battery 4 H2. Battery 4 H2. And Chris, over to you if you want to work those scoops or start breaking torque. Or gap spanners. Um, I think gap spanners are kind of handy to have. 
One break and short that might be handy too. Okay, Cappy. I'll pick a gap spanner. Here's one. And Chris, for the uh, inboard gap spanners, you're looking for handrail 2044 on the radiator side. 2044. Radiator side gets the wire tie. This is the helmet camera view from Bob Bankin, uh, continuing to install some of those handling aids, just uh, getting a little bit of prep work ahead of time for those spacewalks later this month. Cassidy is on his way to join Bankin at the 3B channel and continue some of that prep work. They're going to break some torque on some of the batteries and loosen them up for, uh, before they need to remove them for some of the work later this month, replacing those older nickel hydrogen batteries with newer lithium ion. Battery 4, H2, scoop is installed. Copy. And next one's on the DCSU, H1 at 12 o'clock, and that's inboard or to the left. Station about 270 statute miles over the South Indian Ocean, crossing into an orbital nighttime. Chris, I was, I was tuned out. Was okay, I... well, uh, the last scoop, we'll uh, we'll take a break on that one and we'll do it. A little bit later. Okay. And Bob, for the uh, outboard gap spanner, looking for handrail 2055 on the radiator side. Copy 2055 on the radiator side. Hey, firm. Bacon installing what's called a gap spanner. This is another uh, translation aid, or it uh, really just a rope. You can see there uh, from the helmet camera of Bob Bankin. Uh, it attaches to two ends of the integrated electronics assembly and makes moving from one end to the other just a little bit easier when they're doing some of the battery work. Wire tie and of a Spanner chain going to 2055. Hey, firm, Bob. 045 is complete. Copy, Chris. You can tension that gap spanner chain and do the 180 degree check for slack. Going to uh, put the GoPro down. Copy. GoPro is in the battery uh, six corner two zero three nine. Andrew. Copy handrail two zero three nine.
And uh, Chris, if you're in a good position, you can grab that final scoop that's going to DCSU H1. DCSU H1. A firm. Which direction? It'll be 12 o'clock or uh, to your left inboard. In place and locked. Copy, Chris. On to source region. Okay, and I've got a note for you. If a scoop is present on an H bolt, check that socket tape line is flush with scoop before breaking or resetting torque. How copy? And uh, Chris, could you release the, there's a ret with this gap spanner chain coming back to your, back to the crew lock bag? Start right here. Yes, sir. Okay. And hand over in five seconds. Another handover of video and audio from station should be regaining that uh, shortly. This is a live view from the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Flight Director Royce Renfrew there in the gray suit leading the Orbit 2 teams through today's spacewalk. In the back row there on the right, Jackie Kagi is the spacewalk officer here in the room, knowing those procedures backwards and forwards. The voice you're hearing from here in Mission Control Houston to our two spacewalking astronauts is uh, Jasmine Mogbelli over there on the left. She is the ground IV communicating with the crew and following along on the procedures. Cassidy and Bankin completed the installation of the final battery to the 1B channel. That battery was activated, checked out, and now we have three good lithium ion batteries on the 1B channel. The outboard gap center is complete. Correct. Now working on some of the prep work and get-aheads uh, that will make uh, the next spacewalk a lot of bit easier and uh, tackling a lot of those to-do items. Check is a, a good one to consider. So we're not able to tension the gap spanners tight enough that uh, you can't do several more turns than 180 degrees. I concur. Okay, copy. And um, with that, everything's set on 3 Bravo except for breaking and resetting torque. So I don't know how you want to do it. If you want to have Chris breaking torque and Bob behind with the PGT resetting. Well, the PGT is tethered to Chris. While, while we're talking, let me do H1. H1 torque is broken on battery 3. I'm set on alpha. Seven, clockwise two on H1. And Chris, we're looking for alpha six, clockwise two. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Alpha six, clockwise two. Firm set. I have the PGT, so. Uh, Four turns, green torque, you like 8.3 torque. Copy, 8.3, green light. What do you think, Bob? Want to do four next? Which ones have you done? Uh, just H1 on three, so i got to do H2 on three here. Okay. And then I can cut, yeah, come down towards you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Everyone put up a good fight. H2, torque broken. Copy, H2. And again, looking for good settings. So, um, now in the transition from my task, the PGT went to, from Alpha to Bravo. I just torqued it at Bravo 6. Copy, Chris. So, for H2, okay. Alpha six, Alpha is two, confirmed. Copy. There we go. Point one turns, 8.2 foot pounds, green torquing light, H2, battery three. Okay, copy, battery three complete. And as you both work together on the re remaining batteries, we'll need you to break torque on H1 and H2, and then reset torque H2, H1. Okay. Copy. Copy. No. Like a low, low in the envelope kind of thing. Yeah. Sure that this is uh, more efficient than just since we don't have a scoop on uh, H1 of battery four. Any thoughts? Uh, if any, just uh, we're not looking for a specific. Cut. Yeah, the the tape line won't be flush. Torque is broken. H one. And Bob, can you confirm you're on battery four right now? Correct. Battery four. Copy. Thanks. It's uh, lined up. <laughs> Doesn't want to go. It's a good one. I found them pretty good. Yeah, the same was same with battery three. These batteries, they like their home. The torque is broke on H2. Copy, H2 torque broken. And Chris, uh, you can drive H2, Alpha 6, clockwise 2. Uh, Bob will get it. Copy. Six. Clockwise 2 on H2. Concur.
green light, you point through on the torque. Like a quarter time. Copy. And uh, H1, same settings, Alpha 6, clockwise 2. Copy. Remember, I've got your PTT. Yeah, trying not to go too far. Here's H1, battery one. Copy, H1, battery one. H2, battery one. Copy H2, battery one, torque broken. Battery one, torque broken. Here comes the PGP pack to you. Got it. And ready on H2, battery one, for torquing. Okay, Alpha 6, clockwise 2 for H2, battery one. Alpha, Alpha 6. Clockwise 2, battery 1, H2. Good settings, Chris. And Bob, when you get a chance, we didn't catch the torque on battery 4, H1. It was a, a green light, and I believe it was 8.2. Copy. 8.2 also on H2, battery 1. Copy, 8.2. And... For H1, looking for Alpha 6, clockwise 2 again. Alpha 6, clockwise 2. Green torque, 8.5 pounds. Copy, Chris, and you are at three hours in the EVA, limited consumables, Medox on Chris at seven hours, and you're 30 minutes ahead. Copy. Hey, Chris, it just doesn't seem to make sense to be on the other side of your body to have you pass me the ratchet wrench and then pass me the PGT. Yeah. And you're right there. Agreed. Um, Three hours into today's spacewalk, Cassidy and Banken uh, outfitted the 1B power channel with the final lithium-ion battery, all three batteries up and running, and uh, storing power on that one channel. Now getting some prep work ready for spacewalks later this month to uh, complete the 3B channel. Uh, they've in set some of the portable foot restraints in locations that make it a little bit easier uh, and will make the work to begin uh, later this month a little bit faster. They've installed some gap spanners and handling aids and now they're going through and breaking the torque on all the batteries and resetting it with the pistol grip tool. H2, battery 2. Broken. Copy. Each twos are in there pretty solid. And like for Alpha. Alpha six clockwise two. Clockwise two H two.
Short, 8.3 foot pounds, H2. Copy, 8.3, same settings for H1. Point three foot pounds green sword clay. Battery two complete. Copy eight point three. Battery two is complete. We've got batteries five and six remaining. Radiator down there. Thanks. I twisted around. I thought I was on the other side, and then I saw the crew up bag right when you said, Watch the radiator. Yeah, sorry, I didn't go up there. I should be on top of your tether now. Oh. Yeah. That rotate the buckle 180 thing last for maybe a um, yeah one one grab one check to 180 degrees yeah right obviously obviously let's see I need my friend the ratchet wrench Here you go. Okay, I believe this is battery five. Bob, if you'll double check my orientation. Yep, I agree that's battery five. One torque broken. Copy. So we're going to be doing another Gerlock bag inventory. We will not need another inventory, Bob. H2 torque broken. Copy H2 battery five. Clockwise, two. Confirmed. Good setting for H2. Green torquing light at 8.3 foot pounds. Copy 8.3. Torque, 8.4 foot pounds. Copy, 8.4. Uh, five, or four, yeah, 8.4. Copy, and uh, battery six is the only remaining one. Once torque is broken, uh, Bob, you can take the six inch wobble socket and install it on your PGT.
36 H1 broken copy battery 6 H2 broken about the wrench is coming to you hey, I'm ready 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 Alpha six clockwise two. I'm on H two. Copy. Eight point four foot pounds green torquing light. Copy and uh, Alpha six clockwise two for H one. H1, Alpha 6, clockwise 2. Green torque 8.2. Copy 8.2, and with that, you're complete with uh, the batteries. And Chris, you can stow that PGT and translate back towards your green hook on handrail 2021. Copy. And uh, Chris, you'll also want to pick up the GoPro. Roger that. All right, uh, before I leave, Jasmine, just give us a little mini tag up here. Let's, uh, what time are we at? Yeah, so we're at 310 right now. And uh, we'll be moving on. Chris, you'll be moving on to routing the power cable. Bob will be moving on to the uh, H fixture release. And you're about 35 minutes ahead. All right. And uh, Bob, I'm going to head out. If you need, any, do you need anything before I go? Nope, I think I'm good. Thank you. And Jasmine, I'm going to follow my tether back to the um, an old APFR area and then go inboard from there. Copy and Chris, you'll pick up your green hook at handrail 2021. All right, copy that. And Bob, we think we see the six inch on your PGT. Can you just confirm a good pull test? Yes, the uh, six inches on the PGT, and I can uh, confirm a good pull test. Copy. Uh, with that, you can stow the ratchet wrench in the crew lock bag and then configure it with the doors against structure. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. You're hearing that the prep work on the uh, 3B power channel on the Starboard 6 truss is now complete. Cassidy and Bank are working together to install gap spanners or translation or movement aids, making it a little easier for them to move around the work site later this month. They've broken and reset the torque on the batteries, making it uh, now a little bit more predictable for the uh, removal and installation of the new batteries uh, for when they work on that side of the starboard six truss and they have foot restraints uh, in the new worksite positions and ready to go now uh, Cassidy and Bankin will split up and do two separate duties Cassidy uh, will go to the starboard three truss and route a uh, power cable and Bankin will remove something called an H fixture in preparation for some future power system upgrades.
Okay, Bob. Out of here. Okay. See ya. See ya. And Bob, for your essay, we've lost your WVS again. If you could cycle the switch again. For my green house. Copy, Chris. And Bob, we do have your WVS back. Thanks. Green hook secured to the red Berkham reel. Copy, Chris. We'll take a glove, half, and gauntlet check. That's dry. Gauntlet's in place. Gloves, no change. Copy, Chris. With that, you can translate to the port CETA cart to retrieve the S3 boom power cable bundle. The uh, doors are towards structure. Copy, Bob. With that, you can head back to your green hook. Copy. And daylight in two minutes. Copy that.
arrived at my green hut. Copy, Bob. You can retrieve the green hook. This is Mission Control Houston. For those just tuning in, the International Space Station is now flying 261 statute miles over the North Pacific Ocean, entering into an orbital daytime. Cassidy and Bankin have completed the upgrades of the 1B channel, three lithium-ion batteries installed and checked out. Now at uh, its fully upgraded configuration, They've also done a lot of the prep work on the 3B channel. This is on the other side of the far uh, starboard 6 truss. They've uh, broken and reset torque on the uh, six nickel hydrogen batteries that are currently installed. Uh, they've also installed some gap spanners and put some portable foot restraints in places where they'll be easier to access uh, later this month. Now they're uh, continuing down the procedures with some of uh, the tasks that were originally get-aheads, uh, but when these uh, spacewalks for the 1B channel were first uh, designed, at the outboard seat of Cassidy and Bankin, um, way ahead of the timeline, even on both EVAs combined, uh, now getting some of those tasks done, doing a glove and hap check now. Thank you. Dad, I'm going to head inboard. Copy, Bob. Do the EMT. And Chris, did you make a call? I'm at the cedar cart, in both cedar cart. Okay, copy. Um, you'll be retrieving that power cable bundle and translating to S1 panel Alpha 102. And Bob, uh, you can head to the 3 Alpha BGAH fixture, and I have several cautions and warnings for you when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, no sudden movements on the mass canister. Maintain less than 0.45 feet per second translation speed. Avoid cyclic loading. When nominally released, the end of the Fairchild fastener spring may protrude, creating a sharp edge concern. The Bravo 7 torque setting may cause bolt failure. This could result in a non-captive sharp edge, broken shank, and FOD liberation from the H fixture, or a sharp edge protruding from the BGA structure. Fairchild fastener considerations, align the PGT socket as best as possible over the bolt head, minimize side loading, apply downward pressure to bolt head during removal, prevents loading retainer ring, drive PGT up until turn count, if necessary, manually release remaining turns. How copy? I copy all. Is good news about yeah, that? Yeah, sounds, sounds scary, Bob. You sure you want to do that? Obviously, still obviously. Okay, working on the, uh, grabbing the power cable. 
copy that, Chris. Okay, I'm at the work site. Copy, Chris. So you'll be looking to temp stow the power cable on S1 handrail 3208 and then assess your reach to panel alpha 102. Reach, I'm evaluating now, and I believe it shouldn't be a factor. I can get it. Copy, that's good news. Say so again, this temp still three two what? Three two zero eight. Little guy right above it. A firm. Touch real, no touch, or just just a caution. Checking. And Chris, just try to avoid it. We're just trying to prevent damaging it. Here's a great view of Bob Banking making his way up one of the uh, solar array segments to remove something called an H fixture. This is one of those uh, items that was originally on the get ahead task. Now timelined for this spacewalk after completing the 1B and 3B prep work, 1B channel upgrades and the 3B channel prep work. This uh, H fixture removal uh, will be for some future power system upgrades, just one of those uh, nice to haves that was part of the get aheads for these two spacewalks for the 1B channel. Now we're going to fish it through. Yeah, A firm, and you'll, you'll release wire tie number one with one twist and then insert the cable through that MLI gap towards Alpha 102 panel. Okay. And Jaws, I've arrived at H fixture bracket number four is what it's labeled. Okay, copy that. Bob, so you're going to attach your mini workstation RET to the mini workstation adjustable D-ring. And then that adjustable will hook to the H fixture onto the tether point. I've got a rat from adjustable. That adjustable is making a loop with the uh, D ring, and that adjustable is then tethered to the H fixture. Okay, Bob, that looks good to us, and you can 
prepare your small trash bag in case there's a bolt failure. Tie number one. Copy, Chris. I've got the trash bag. Okay, Bob, with that, uh, you can grab your PGT with the six inch. Settings are Bravo seven, counter one. Bravo 7, counter 1. They removed the cap from uh, J116, my table. Uh, a from, and you can remove it before you fish it through the MLI if you need to. Yeah, exactly, that's, that's in work. The cap's removed. Copy. Comes the fish. And uh, Bob, once you've got those settings, just let us know which uh, bolt you're going to first. You're looking to release torque one to two turns on each bolt. Okay. Um, I'll be going to, uh, I guess, bolt it to the tether point. The tether point's on the right-hand side. We'll be going to the top right corner first. Copy, we see you on bolt one, and we've got good visual. Bob Benkin uh, working on removing this uh, item called the H fixture. It's that gold box right there. Here's another view uh, just to, for some uh, context of where Bob is uh, relative to other parts of the station. You can see this is uh, sort of at the base of the solar arrays. Uh, and, and then uh, beyond that, towards the truss segment, are the, uh, are, are the uh, new lithium ion batteries. Yeah, so Chris, you'll release the first TA clamp on cable W5111, and that's uh, back from Papa 116 on that Alpha 102 J195. All right, I'm on Alpha 102. That's the panel. A firm. J116 cable going into the interface panel. On the other side of that, there's a plug. Yep, and you'll want to release the first TA clamp on that cable. The torque is broken on one. Okay, Bob, and say number of turns. Uh, just about one and a half turns. Copy one and a half. And we see you on bolt four. The torque is broken on bolt four, one turn. Copy one turn on bolt four. And bolt three. Copy, and we're 15 seconds from LOS. Copy. Okay, one turn on uh, bolt three. Copy, one turn on three. Yeah, clamp release. Now in a, another short handover of communication from those tracking and data relay satellites. Again, one of the many uh, handovers we have as the station makes its way around the Earth. Those TDRS satellites are part of NASA's space communication and navigation program and part of the space network. Part of that's just trying to get, you know, try to get a good impulse with your arm on Bravo 7. Right, right. Okay, back with you after the handover. Bob, I think you said one turn on bolt number two as well. 
I think all four bolts are torque broke now. Yep, con concur, and you can. Uh, with the PDT now on Bravo 7, counter one will fully release each of the bolts. So on bolt one, an extra 10 and a half turns and 11 turns on two through four. Okay, Jasmine, I'm ready to, uh, the TA clamps removed, I'm ready to release the uh, character. Okay, copy, Chris, and um, your WVS is out. Um, so when you get a chance, if you could cycle that. So you'll be demating Papa 116 from J195. And good WVS, Chris. Made it. Copy, you can uh, get a good inspection and then we'll be mating J116 to the ISS cable, Papa 116. Here's a view from the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy, Jasmine Mogbelli, the ground IV here in Mission Control Houston, walking him through the steps of routing and connecting some of the power cables you see there from his helmet camera. He's doing a completely different task at this time from Bob Bankin, who is at uh, the base of one of the station's solar arrays, removing something called an H fixture. Looks nice and intact. Copy, good inspection. You're go to mate. The bolt on the bottom right is uh, loose after 11 turns. Copy, bolt number two. Right. Copy, bolt number two. Okay, that's made it. You want the TA clamp back in place? I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, if you can reach it, Chris, uh, we'll close the TA clamp. Clamp is secure. Copy, and you can install that cap uh, that's on your mini workstation onto panel Alpha 102 J195. Roger. Cap is installed. Copy, and Chris, you can wire tie that S3 power cable on the inside of the truss near the MLI opening. And you'll just want to verify the cable secure and clear of the MT translation path on phase one when you do that. Understand all. Okay, our tie complete for yeah, the MLI. The three of the four bolts uh, released, working on the fourth now. Copy, C working on number three now, and uh, Chris, I got that that wire tie's in place and it's clear of the MT translation path. Um, with that, I have a warning for you, Chris. There's potential MMOD strike on S1 handrail 3210. 
I'll copy. Okay. And we're going to begin routing that S3 uh, power cable to the install location. So first verify safety tether is not trapped by the cable or wire tie, and you're going to go to here to wire tie to handrail 3208. It worked. All four bolts are loose at this point, Jasmine. Copy that, Bob. Um, with that, you can use the adjustable equipment tether strap that's on the tether point to pull the H fixture from the GSE pad. Okay. Here we go. And Bob, before you do that, can you confirm they're all popped out? Yes, I can confirm that all four are popped out. Copy, thanks. And you'll want to, as you do that, Bob, rotate it, rotate the H fixture away from the GSE pad to release it. It doesn't uh, want to release. Okay, copy, Bob, stand by. Chris, or Bob, if you want to put your left hand on the metal plate just above the H fixture to get better leverage, you can try that. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just tuning in, Bob Bankin and Chris Cassidy working on separate tasks at this time. This is the helmet camera view from Bob Bankin, the number 20 at the bottom right of your screen. He's working on removing this gold square uh, called the H fixture from the base of the uh, station's solar arrays. In the meantime, Cassidy is working on routing a power cable, no, cable uh, at the Starboard 3 truss. Three two zero eight complete. For the three two one zero. Copy three two zero eight. And uh, as you said, going on to three two one zero. If you can just verify the connectors aren't protruding through the phase two MLI. Correct. Just the, okay. Yeah. And Chris, can we have you check your safer handles? And uh, Josh, I guess I'm going to have to go for the pry bar. Okay, copy that, Bob. Do you have a BRT down? Did you want to try that if you don't already? Yep, I have a BRT down. Okay, uh, copy that, Bob. With that, we can go for the pry bar. Do I need to leave it? I've undone the bolts. I can't pull this off. I'm tethered to it. So make sure you're happy with the configuration I'm in. Checking. Uh, 
Fernando's went down, by the way. And Bob, if you uh, since you're tethered to it, you can move that tether to the handrail so that the H fixture is tethered uh, to the handrail as you go to uh, retrieve the pry bar. So one other thing I'm going to try is that I can move the bracket uh, kind of up and down. Okay. Right here. Yeah, we're seeing it in your a little bit. WBS. I think uh, after, I might take it to each of the extremes and give it another tug and see if that does any good. Okay. And I'm also being told if you want to try pulling straight out vice the rotating pull, you can try that as well. I'm putting about as much force as I can into it to try to pull it off, and uh, not uh, not interested in coming off. Copy. One three. Two one zero. Copy on three two one zero, and uh, verify that it's out of the MT translation path on phase two. And then I have a few cautions for you, Chris. Verify there is an MMOD strike here. I got it with the GoPro, and go ahead with your cautions. Copy. Avoid contact with targe beam. If contact occurs, wait two to five minutes for structural response to dissipate. Verify S3 boom power cable is clear of starboard targe rotational envelope. Do not translate on CAS, deploy clevis, or ADP. How copy? Copy all. Okay, Chris, wait. Three, two, three, two, one. Yeah. On the uh, uh, Zenith stanchions. You want it on the right. inboard of the handrail on the Zenith stanchion. Board side, Zenith stanchion, 3210, inward. Bob, can you hold and stand down from what you're doing for a sec? That's correct, Chris. And Chris, you want it routed on the outboard side of that handrail. Outboard side, copy. And Bob, um, as you do that, just make sure you're not putting pressure on the gate. We don't want that, that tether to release. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure I've got enough leverage to really accomplish much here either, so. Okay, Bob, um, we'll have you uh, stand down on that and try the pry bar. This is Mission Control Houston. For those just tuning in, Bob Benkin working on uh, troubleshooting some techniques to get that H fixture, that's that gold square you see in his view, uh, removed from the base unit of the solar arrays called the mast canister. Chris Cassidy, in the meantime, uh, continuing to route uh, power cables. You may have heard some cautions and warnings associated with that route, uh, just making sure that when Cassidy was routing the cables, um, the, the readouts were on what to hold on to and what not to hold on to. 
uh, while that power cable was being routed across the station structure. I'm going to make my way to the or you back to the pry bar. Copy, Bob. Yeah, I'm putting a pretty big load into it, and it's uh, not, not budging, so high bar does much. Copy, Bob. And, Bob, when you go to grab that pry bar, recommend you go ahead and grab the AMS tube puller at the same time in case we need it. This is Mission Control Houston. Um, Bob Bankin now heading over to his tool bag, uh, pulling the H fixture straight out. Didn't quite seem to work, so he's going to get some more tools and try a pry bar and then some additional tools if necessary, trying to get that H fixture removed. So, Bob, if we, if we get to the point where we're using that tube puller, tube puller um, the idea is you'd insert the hook between the H fixture and the bracket and use that hook uh, to exercise the ball detent. Okay. There's really just not very much play on that uh, plate. Uh, I'll bring all those things. Copy that, Bob. Hi, right, Jasmine. I'm on. Handrail 3004. I have it routed outboard of WIF 1 on S3. Okay, copy, Chris. And uh, yep, you'll wire tie it there to handrail 3004 on the outboard side of the handrail. On the outboard side of the handrail. Good enough. Using a wire tie for my BRT. Copy.
And Jasmine, can it? Uh, it looks like it's going to cut the corner. You don't want it to make a 90 degree corner here at 3005, right? You just yeah, Chris, it, it can it can cut the corner. I think that actually keeps it more clear of the targe. I've got the high bar, the two polar, and the uh, associated adjustable. Okay, copy, Bob. You can head back to the H fixture. This is Mission Control Houston. This is the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy that you're seeing now. He's working on routing that power cable you see in his left hand through pre-designated parts of the station structure, confirming some of those points with the ground IV here in Mission Control Houston, Jasmine McBilly. Bob, if we can't get it off, we'll have to redrive the fasteners. This is Mission Control Houston, Bob Banken aboard the International Space Station working on this H fixture. Here's a replica here on the ground, handled by uh, Jasmine Mogbelli you see there. It's her voice that you're hearing communicating some of these procedures to the crew. Engineers here in the room taking a look at that H fixture. Little one directly below MS. So Mogbelli can properly relay some of the new techniques with some of the new tools that Bob Banken is now bringing back to the work site. Hey firm, you'll install another wire tie there. Bob, so it looks like you've got a good position on that pry bar um, between the H fixture and the mounting plate. Yeah, there's just not enough gap to put the pry bar in. Okay, Bob, copy, you can't get the uh, pry bar in. So we'll try and go to the AMS2 really pillar. I'll keep working on it. There's a, I gotta just try to slowly wiggle it in. There's not much, uh, much space there. So. Okay. I'm assuming that the reference to, to use the to try to get it um, towards the side, to the other point side, top the defense. Is that correct? You, yeah, you can go where you are now and on the opposite side, the bottom side, as you're looking at it. But you cannot go to the side with the tether point because that will push against the mass canister itself. All right, I just am wondering if uh, in terms of getting load onto the ball defense, is it best to do it on this left side or on this right side at the top of the plate? We think the right side, Bob.
doing, Chris? Doing great. Nice to have this uh, truck checklist page. Sort of autonomous over here. With my handrails. Yeah, Joe, there's just not enough purchase to get this pie bar in. Okay, Bob, we'll try the uh, AMS tube puller. Uh, as you retrieve that, you're both four hours into the EVA. The limiting consumable is Medox on Chris at seven hours, and you're about 30 minutes ahead of timeline. Okay. And, and Bob, I'll, so I'll talk you through how you're going to use the AMS tube puller. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so you want to take the hook, and if you, as you're looking at the bracket right now with the tether point on the right side, at the, uh, you can go in from the top right, and you're, if you look uh, above that tether point on the right, you should see a, a circle, a metal silver circle. You basically want to, on the inside of the bracket, put that hook in, and there's a ball detent there. You're trying to just cycle in and out. Uh, to loosen it. Ground IV, uh, Jasmine Mogbelli walking uh, Bob Bankin uh, from the helmet camera 20 here that you're seeing on your screen through the process of removing that H fixture, trying troubleshooting with a new tool called the pry bar. That didn't quite work, so they're taking out. Silver circle is. They're taking out a tool that was specially designed for the alpha magnetic spectrometer uh, repair work that took place late last year. And uh, you, I don't know if you can feel if you're getting the ball detent or not, but basically you're going to do that on that top side and then on the lower right side as well. Can't really tell if I'm feeling it or not. Okay, what you're doing looks good from our view. All right, Jasmine, quick tag up. Ready, Chris? Uh, the cable is at 3049. It is uh, secured with the adjustable that we took it out of the airlock with, and if it's okay with you, I'll just use that as a, to secure the bundle until uh, the end of the day. If not, if you don't come back here, I think it's okay. And then the, a little delta to the routing, there was no wire tie that lined up with 3029, but it lined, the wire tie is on 3042. The wire does go right, right over the top of 3029, just like as if it was wire tied there. Okay. Copy three zero four two instead of three zero two nine and and that checking on the adjustable. Is there I don't understand a troop puller. Where do you put it? Um apparently down inside there's a little ball piece that the, you can blind try to cycle. Oh, okay. I've done that uh, several times now on the top and the bottom, and I've, I'm trying to work the tube puller to stay straight as it bends a little bit as you uh, put it through that pace. Yeah, the tube puller is bendy material, too. And, Chris, that, uh, that adjustable tether uh, stow is good, and if you can just uh, as you go back, verify that ADP is in place. Say that again, verify the what? Verify the ADP is in place. Let me know if you need me to talk you on. Okay, stand by. So, Jaws, I, I 
probably cycled the top and the bottom as best I can. There's not a lot of tactile feedback that's uh, accomplished anything, but it is, it does bend the tube puller. I've tried to bend it back and forth, putting it in both directions to try to keep it uh, straight. Um, I just the next thing to just try again with this adjustable, pulling it off. Hey, from Bob, and uh, what you were doing looked like it was good, so give it another uh, tug and see if that works. Copy, Chris. And and that ADP I was talking about is basically a pin as you pass handrail 3014, that stanchion going to the AMS uh, towards the bottom of it, there should be a adjustable diameter pin. You just want to make sure it looks like it's installed. Copy that. GP, it's a throwback to Afghan skills runs. It's a a lot of tasks ago. AGP in place. Copy. And uh, Chris, just uh, try and get uh, WVS on as you backtrack and verify the cables are clear of that TARD rotational envelope and the MT on phase one. Definitely clear of the TARD rotational envelope. Copy, Chris. Uh, survey. I think uh, no joy, Jaws. Okay. Copy, Bob. Um, still no joy. Do you think there's anything having Chris there with you uh, could help with? Um, I don't know if there's an arm or an APFR position that could maybe give you a little bit more purchase, but I don't, uh, I'm not sure that that would, uh, would do it either. I think the best answer is probably a, like a longer tool inserted into the tether point. I don't know if that might break the tether point off, but to try to uh, increase the leverage, there's, you know, I can, can pull on it pretty good, but uh, it's really not moving at all. Copy by it. Uh, okay. Uh, like nothing that two people, another person, can help with. Okay. Copy. Uh, stand by. We're talking it down here. I don't think there's there's not two people's. The only thing you could do would be to try to hold on to my feet, but uh, I'm getting a lot of leverage into here, and so yeah. Another handover of uh, communications, audio and video from the International Space Station, relayed through the tracking and data relay satellites. And that's part of the uh, Space Communications and Navigation Program. Flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston, the International Space Station Flight Control Room guiding uh, Bob Benkin and Chris Cassidy through the procedures today. Here, 
They've completed their primary task of upgrading the 1B channel. They've even got some prep work done on the 3B channel and now are continuing through several get ahead tasks. I'm able to put quite a bit of force into it. Uh... Yeah, copy all. Uh, uh... And uh, Bob, just stand by one. We're still talking it. From the helmet camera of Bob Banken, he's still working on that H fixture trying multiple different ways to try to get that uh, gold square structure removed. That is the H fixture. It's on the base unit or the mast canister of one of the station's solar arrays. Okay, Bob, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, reinstall the bolts. We don't think there's anything else we can do to, to get that off, so we'll have to re reassess for future EVAs. Um, so a couple of notes and cautions. Two H-fixture bolts are needed to meet the tie-down requirements to prevent loss of H-fixture fasteners during hand start, minimize side loading, maintain axial force on bolt to compress spring during rotation. How copy? And um, Chris, before I uh, get Bob working on reinstalling, um, are you good on uh, your forward plan? Uh, we'll have you head back to the airlock to pick up the uh, Ethernet cable. Okay, that's what I was thinking, but I, I, uh, it's nice to tag up with you on that, and that sounds great. Okay, copy, Chris. Okay, Bob, um, let me know when you're ready to start working the reinstall. Okay, I'm ready to start working the reinstall. Okay, you'll apply downward pressure and hand start the H fixture bolt. Report turns on each. Copy. We've got about uh, one and a half turns on the top left one, and uh, no turns on any of the others yet. Copy one and a half on bolt four. International Space Station 271 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean. Heading into an orbital nighttime, we'll see the view start to get just a little bit darker. In the meantime, Bob Banken has uh, exhausted some of the techniques to remove this H fixture. This was uh, a unit to be removed for future power system upgrades, but it was on uh, the large list of get-ahead tasks uh, that were originally scheduled for these first two uh, spacewalks to upgrade the 1B power channel, which has since been successfully upgraded with three new lithium-ion batteries. They even got some of the prep work tasks for the 3B channel that's coming up uh, later this month. This H fixture uh, is for tasks much further down the road, but troubleshooting this now identified some uh, techniques that must be needed for when it becomes more of a priority. One turn. Copy one turn on bolt three. For now, since... Uh, Benkin was unable to remove the H fixture. He's bolting it back into place. Given that it is not an urgent task, then it's one of the uh, get ahead tasks for future work. Uh, use that to try to get the turn started. The bolts are not, um, they're, they're, fl they're flush into the hole. They're not very, uh, 
gauze, so getting a, getting fingers on him is just taking a thumb with pressure and then trying to twist it. Checking, then, Bob. Depending on what your settings are, I'd still recommend that we try Alpha, Alpha 1. Even though, uh, even if, once I get them all started, I'd still recommend doing a low torque for a turn or two just to, just to see if it's, if it's moving. Copy, Bob. Okay. Okay, Bob, um, you can use Alpha 1 instead of, uh, uh, instead of using your hand on the uh, remaining runs just to get them started. Okay, I've got all of them started uh, one turn now, but I still would like to just start with uh, one turn on, or two turns on uh, Alpha 1 just to make sure that they're in there and they're not cross-threaded or something. Okay, that that's fine, Bob. You can do that. And what will the settings be when we uh, go to actually turn the bolts? So it'll be Alpha three clockwise one. And Chris, as you get back to the airlock, when you're ready, I'll take a and glove and hap check from you. Okay. Half strike, gloves good. Gauntlets that are there, but I understand not applicable anymore. Copy. Good checks. And when you're ready, you can open the hatch thermal cover. Okay, copy. I'm gonna the GoPro camera at the base of the Sugis Burger. Copy, Chris, GoPro at the base of the Sugis Spur. Okay, Jaws, I've got that one additional turn on each of the fasteners at this point in that Alpha 1. Okay, copy, Bob. You can go to Alpha 3, clockwise 1, and it'll be an additional 10 turns on each one. Copy. Alpha 3, clockwise 1. Okay, top left. Uh, handrail 0500, uh, Jasmine, for the, for the GoPro. Copy 0500 for the GoPro. Cover open. Copy thermal covers open. With that, you can retrieve the S3 Ethernet cable reel bag from the airlock and stow it on your BRT. And you want the uh, bag opening facing you. Copy that. I got the seven turns and uh, top left one torqued out. Copy seven turns on number four. 
And can we get that torque and light on that, Bob? Top right. Yep, green light, 18.2 on the torque. Copy, 18.2. One more time, say those instructions about the... Um, Bob, we'll have you stand by for one, and Chris, for the cable bag, verify the bag opening is uh, facing you when you throw it on your BRT. Facing me, interesting. Okay, no problem. Complete. Bob, can you repeat the torque? We heard one eight decimal two. Is that correct? One eight decimal two. I'm sorry, it's on Bravo, not on Alpha. Copy, stand by. That. Maybe that's what it needs. Drive it hard to the other direction. I've got back Charlie. I'm coming over here. I do. Okay, Bob, can we have you go to Bravo 4 counterclockwise 1 and release uh, one turn on bolt number 4, the one you just uh, torqued down? Okay, Bravo 4. Counter one on the one I just torqued down. A firm and just looking for a one yeah, turn man. to release the torque. Copy one turn. Thermal cover closed, safer handles down. Copy thermal cover and safer handles. Thanks, Chris. Engine and access. Copy. Okay, there's one turn. Copy and. You'll go back to Alpha 3, clockwise 1. And Chris, I have two cautions for you when ready. Alpha 3, clockwise 1. Good settings. Looking for... It works for your calm. I'm ready. One turn, 4.6 uh, it looks like on the torque. You might. Okay, Bob, that's uh, good for that bolt number four. We need at least one more bolt. And Bob, so if you want to go bolt number two, the opposite corner, uh, we'll do the same thing. So alpha three, clockwise one. Alpha three, clockwise one on the opposite bolt. A firm should, uh, looking for, well, to uh, torque. Recommended translation, you want me to just go aft on the airlock or come up to the uh, bus go, to go you, port? So you can go zenith on the C to spur to S0 and on then... The port, port on the airlock. And then you want to go port. Just for S0 and then port. Copy that. Airlock. This is Mission Control Houston. Quick status update. Cassidy has completed the power cable routing. He has since gone to the airlock to retrieve an Ethernet cable. Now he's just uh, translating or moving over to the worksite to begin some of that work. 
In the meantime, Bankin is securing the H fixture back into place. He only needs two bolts to secure it back to the mast canister. This is the base unit of the solar array. This solar array installed on June 11, 2007, more than 13 years ago on STS-117. After he secures the H-fixture back to that mass canister, he'll join Cassidy for the uh, Ethernet cable routing. Uh, with that, you can put, pick up all your tools and tethers and head back to the ORU bag. And Chris, sorry, those cautions for you. Yeah, Bob, no worries. Uh, we learned a lot for the next time we attempt this. Um, Chris, for you, avoid inadvertent contact with S0 aft face radiator. Avoid inadvertent contact with surrounding connectors and fluid lines. How copy? Okay, and Chris, before you go into the rat sense, we're going to drop your green hook on handrail three, four, five, nine. Four, five, nine. Give me a direction to that one. And say your current position. On that, uh, on the diagonal, it gets the first wire tie after the rat's nest. There's, there's one number. It's starboard two handrails. And it's three, four, five, nine. Three, four, five, nine. Hey, firm. You need it all the way there? I'm, I'm going to do it right here where the first wire tie goes. That's okay with you. Otherwise, I'm going back. Yeah, Chris, uh, your tether lengths may be close, but otherwise we're good with that. We think it should reach. It should reach. I'm trying to understand that comment. Yeah, Chris, that's good. You can drop it on the handrail you're at. Copy.
Bob, what's your status? I'm back at the medium ore. Are you back? And uh, I'm going to collect it, I believe, after stowing some tools inside of it. Okay. I'm uh, just about to take the real bag and go into the rat's nest. Okay. Gave an assessment to the what we talked about, leaving the bag, and then... Yeah. But I, I think I'm just going to keep it on me and... Seems like it's going to work, huh? Yeah. You know. <laughs> Going in. And uh, Chris, I think I missed it in the handover, but you already dropped your green hook on 3459. No, I did not. I dropped it on the uh, angled one on the strut that has no number. It's the first uh, place that gets a wire tie after the rat's nest. Yep, sorry, copy. I think I see you heading towards the rat's nest. You want to stay nadir of the radiator on phase four and head to the port side. Okay, I'm there. Okay, Chris, you're going to be removing the cap from the S3 Ethernet cable. W4294P5 using the adjustable equipment tether on the real bag. Okay. And, and Jaws, I have the tools, high bar, and puller returned to the OAU bag. Copy, Bob. Uh, if you're confident everything's back in there, you can stow that OAU bag on your BRT and uh, head back inboard, but we'll take a glove, half, and gauntlet check first. Okay. My uh, half is still baseline. My gauntlets are up. And uh, my gloves still look in uh, good uh, condition. I did pick up uh, quite a bit of extra smudging from the H fixture itself. Copy additional smudging on the gloves, but otherwise good. And Bob, is the trash bag still on you, or did you stow that in the ORU bag? Still on me. Copy. Okay, and Bob, just a reminder as you head in to hit the inboard brake pedals on both the CETA carts. Copy. All right, there's uh, three connectors here. I believe that's uh, what you were expecting. And say again, the whiskey number? 4294. Whiskey 4294. Whiskey 4300. Other cable. Okay, let's see. 4300 uh, is the cap on the spider cable that uh, that one will also come off using a mini workstation ret. Um, the 4294 is the, the Ethernet cable. Okay, so there, the spider cable is named that for a reason. It looks like there's four cables, four ends coming out of it. And I see Whiskey 4300 on. Hey, from Chris, that's the cap you'll want to remove on the spider cable. And you can use a mini workstation ret for that. So I'm, I'm not 
I guess I'm not saying correctly. The, there are seven caps. I see four bundled to four cables bundled together with four caps, and three bundled together with three caps. They're all part of the spider cable. And you want the J5 cap, sorry. J5, okay, that helps me. I've got the uh, OAU bag on my BRT, and I'm headed back to the uh, airlock, I'm guessing. Yeah, from Bob, you'll head back in board to uh, help Chris, and uh, on your way back in, you can stow that OAU bag wherever you'd like between the CETA spur and the airlock. J5. J5 on Whiskey 4300. Good words, Chris. You can remove that cap, and ultimately you want it stowed on the adjustable that's on the real bag. That's where it is. Copy. And the uh, other cap you're looking to remove is on the Ethernet cable itself, uh, P5. Whiskey 2 Sorry, 4294. Let's keep 4294. Okay, that cap is removed. Copy. With that, you can make. No five. EMI is clear. Mating. Copy. Good inspection. Go to mate. Okay, Chris, with that, we're gonna start routing. I have a few notes for you. Use S1 Nader handrail path between faces five and six to S3. Secure wire ties as needed every five to 10 feet. Pull slack to reduce cable bowing out, yet avoid putting tension in cable and verify safety tether not trapped by cable wire tie. How copy? Got it, thanks. Okay, so Chris. Over the top of these SMS wires, looking for this little handrail on the opposite side. Okay, from the angled one. The angled one. Okay. Okay, I've tapped the brake pedal, brake release pedal on uh, the inboard side of the outboard seat of course. <laughs> Copy, Bob. that little handrail as a wire tie. Copy, Chris. Next, you're going to want to route the cable station forward of the S0 aft strut.
This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, 39 minutes into today's spacewalk. Cassidy uh, working on the routing of an Ethernet cable, making some connections and routing it across the station structure. Bankin uh, wrapped up the rebolting of the H fixture back to the mast canister. Uh, this was the gold square that was at the uh, base unit of the solar arrays. That secured into place, now returning uh, his tool bag over close to the airlock. The station 260 statute miles over the Philippines in an orbital nighttime. Arrived at the top of the Cedar Spur. Copy, Bob, and just let us know where you end up temp stowing the ORU bag. Copy, you're around the strut. Next, you'll retrieve your green hook from the handrail you dropped it off, the diagonal one. Hey, copy. Hey, Bob, speed. Can you, uh, Bob, can you slide past me at this point, or, or uh, if you go on the airlock and go that? and go start port, just trying to figure out the best. I, I want to drop this bag off. I oh, figured okay. the best thing to do is just drop it on the airlock handrail. Copy the ring. Copy that. And Chris, uh, that where you retrieve your green hook from, that diagonal strut, I believe that's the same one you're going to want to put your next wire tie on. I believe so, too. And you'll want to wire tie to the zenith part of that handrail stanchion. Green hook retrieved. Copy green hook.
does the large or, or the medium or U bag is uh, tethered to the circular handrail 506 on the underside of the uh, airlock. Copy that, Bob. And with that, you can uh, head over to help Chris and just let us know how you want to work it with who's trailing and who's leading. Yeah, Bob, if you can go on the airlock straight port, that works for you, and then you can come up behind. But I'm not, I'm not picturing the tethers behind me, so double check me on that. Okay, um, I think my tether is actually kind of trailing a, a little bit. Uh, off to the starboard side still. Kind of on the see the light, or on the light stanchion down there. Okay. I'll have to try to clear that a little bit. I've almost made it to the sea to spur. Okay, Chris. And, uh, can't, see, can't see you, so just tell me if you need me to do anything that helps you or helps okay. us. I'm on the uh, airlock toolboxes. Okay. Trying to make sure my safety tether is not. Uh, So let's see, I probably need to pass you and come behind you. Yeah, exactly. You go one handrail further to the uh, port side. To the port? Yeah. Yep. Not a whole lot of handrails in here. Coming up to see this for right Yeah, coming up right behind you. Oh, I'll you. pass over your tether. Now that I'm looking at my tether, I think I need to do a bag swap around that thing so my. Or wait a minute, we're going to go. Oh, it's fine. Thinking about the cedar spur in my tether, which side of the cedar spur that tether? On the forward side, you have to come underneath here. Yeah. We want the cable on the left side of the cedar spur, right, Jasmine? Hey, firm. Hey, firm. Yeah. So when I get to that spot, Bob, I'm going to just have to do the little okay. bag switcheroo like I did last over. I mean, if you need me to go up, down, Port starboard. Otherwise, I'm just holding right here. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my get each other clear of the uh, light. There we go. Back right into it. As you see, with it pointing right at you. Yeah. You know, if I get onto the cedar spur, then you'll have room to pass, because where I'm looking, there's really no way for you to... This way you can get by me. How's that work? I think I'm... Can you get by me? This is where I need to do the bag switch. Okay, so you want me to go underneath you? Yeah, because yeah, there's maybe one, one more place that needs a wire tie. Okay. So while you and Jasmine are tagging up on that, I'll push the bag around. Okay. Jasmine, is there a reason why we should delay on putting our fair leads out? 
the problem is that it's, uh, the tethers are, you know, wrapping around the light. Checking. I've got it clear now, just trying to keep it uh keep it clear. Yeah. Barely do a little bit. Another short handover of uh communication from the International Space Station. Again, we'll be regaining it shortly. Teams here in Mission Control Houston leading Chris Cassidy and Bob Bankin through today's procedures led by Flight Director Royce Renfrew there in the gray suit. To his right, Jasmine Mogbelli, the ground IV is her voice you're hearing here from Mission Control Houston. And the back row on the right there is Jackie Kagi, the spacewalk officer, knows the procedures backwards and forwards. Okay, and if so if you, if you drop those rich man fair leads now, you may not make it all the way uh, out, and so you may need to drop a green hook along the way. So um, you can do that if you want to, knowing that you may need to drop a green hook to reach. Okay. Just continue. Yeah, if, if you can scooch to your left to the port a little bit more, and then I'll get stuck under the seat of spring. As we start to regain some views from the International Space Station, we do have a question from the hashtag AskNASA that has to do with handovers of some of this video and audio. This question comes from Kate on Twitter, who asks, during handovers, do the two astronauts conducting the spacewalk lose communication with each other? The answer there is no. The uh, communications between spacewalking astronauts is through UHF antennas on the station, not through the tracking and data relay satellites. Cassidy and Bankin continuing to route those Ethernet cables as they enter into an orbital sunrise over the North Pacific Ocean, Space Station 261, statute miles over the Pacific Ocean, just east off the coast of Japan. Under sun's coming up. I think I'll need to take a wire tie caddy out of here probably. Huh? Yeah, I think so. And uh, Chris, just for SA, was the last wire tie location you installed where your green hook previously was? That's affirmative, yeah. Copy, thanks. And so the... Uh, Next handrail you're routing to is 3431. That's the one between where your green hook was and the Cetus spur. That's the one we're on right there. That's the next wire tie spot. I'm feathered, Bob. I'm going to release your cover. Okay. And I have the wire tie caddy. You have a wire to caddy, copy that. Are you there, come check. Yeah, Chris, lost you for a second. Say again. 
We're working on 3431 right now, Bob, put, putting the wire tie. Wire tie on 3431. Copy. 3431 is in work. Next, you're going to be routing it aft of the CETA spur and then continue starboard. I can give you the handrail when you're ready. Just one second. Okay, we are after the Cedar Spur and um, ready for a handrail number. Copy, it's uh, handrail 3291, it's just Nader of the ATA. Little, little one, 3291. AFIRM, it's a little one. Okay, handrail, wire tie, install 3431. Copy 3431 installed. Of this one right here, this little guy. Okay. Basically the first one you get to after the Seagull Spur. Okay. And as you uh, work 3291, I have a few cautions for both of you when ready. Never-ending amount of cautions for us. I just, I know you love them. So uh, you're going to avoid contact with the targe beam. If contact occurs, wait two to five minutes for structural response to dissipate. Verify the S3 boom Ethernet cable is clear of starboard targe rotational envelope, and avoid contact with the CETA light and CP3. How copy? And I uh, see the wire tie being worked. Next, you're going to route the cable to handrail 3222. So you're going to go um, make sure your safety tether's not trapped by the cable or wire tie. You'll translate starboard of the CETA spur to 3292. Confirm uh, which side of the uh, light you'd like it on. On the forward side of the light. Copy that. Okay, so the handrail 3291 now has a wire tie and the Ethernet cable captured. Copy, Bob. Are we okay to transition to the aft? What's the next handrail you want on the aft side? Can we transition forward for the... Uh, yeah, you'll, trans the you'll transition Nader. So after 3291, you'll transition Nader and go past handrail 3282. Wire tie on 3282. So as you continue this uh, translation starboard, you can get, uh, just wire tie every five to ten feet and give us the wire tie locations. I think we probably I need one to initiate. Yeah, I think it makes sense right there. Even though it's not very far, it just is not. It's make it's right up. It's up turn, turn, yeah. turn, turn, yeah. Yeah, and there are extra wire ties, so that sounds good. Now to 3258 underneath the targe. 
copy 3258. You can uh, continue out. And Chris, as you continue outboard, you're eventually uh, going to handrail 3222, which is a small handrail. 22, copy. Okay, our tie is installed on handrail 32. 82. Copy 3282, Bob. I'll do a 3275. Copy installing a wire tie on 3275. Wire ties installed on 3275. Copy, Bob. Thirty two sixty seven next. Copy thirty two sixty seven work. Another handover of video and audio from the TDRS satellites, part of the Space Network under the uh, Space Communications and Navigation Program. This is the International Space Station Flight Control Room leading the uh, teams, uh, leading the flight control teams and the spacewalk today, led by Flight Director Royce Renfrew, you see there in the gray blazer. Behind him, Jackie Kagey is the spacewalk officer today. I didn't catch your last, Chris. Working the details of the procedures uh, with her teams in some of the back rooms. The voice you're hearing is Jasmine Mogbelli to the right of uh, Renfrew. She's the ground IV walking uh, Cassidy and Banken through today's procedures. Cassidy and Banken continuing the work to route Ethernet cables on the outside of the station. 
now regaining some of that video. I copy you've got the wire tie started. Um, you can continue outboard to handrail 3010 if you'd like. We don't want you to turn that corner um, without dropping a wire tie there, though. Okay. And uh, I've got another caution for both of you. Translate only on Zenith Edge side of ELC4. How copy? And I copy as well. And Jasmine, we must be getting close to a, I guess, or a hourly check in. Yeah, Chris, you caught me. I missed it. We're five minutes over. Sorry about that. So you're at five hours and five minutes. A limiting consumable is Medox on Chris at seven hours, and you're approximately on the timeline. Probably ought to put one on 32, 38, or 32, 34, one or the other. Your choice, Bob. Tight little spot like we predicted. It's a corner. Yeah, and Chris, we expect that that corner may, may need two people, and um, you'll want to make sure the cable is routed forward of the CP3 stanchion. think I can squeeze. Okay. Hey, Bob, don't come any, any closer. I'm going to up the bag and go around this thing. I can't, I can't get in between. Okay. And I'll pass you the bag around. Yeah. But I feel like there's not a whole lot of need to tether to the bag, but it uh, seems unconscious in the bull to not. Wire tight all the way. And adjustable from the uh, work, yeah. my mini workstation. I've got a two more wire ties. 
looks like there's another, we've used about half of them so far. I plan to put one, you already got one in down there? There's two, there's two already in here. Okay. You'll be able to make the corner. Okay. I'll snug it up and then. Whenever you get a sec, can you just release? There was an adjustable from the bag. On to the next hand rail. Yep. Ready for that? Uh, I am. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Okay, Jasmine, we rounded the corner. Okay, copy. And you've got the cable bag forward of the CP3 stanchion, and you'll want to wire tie to 3010. The one after 3010. 3009, and you want it routed starboard of WIF 4. Non radiator side of 4. A firm. And on 3009, uh, you'll also want on that same starboard side, and you want to wire tie the Nader stanchion. Nader, towards Earth. Let me know when uh, you're probably going to. A little bit before you can move forward, correct? Yeah, I'm going to throw a wire tie down here so you can have it. Okay. How many do you have wire ties remaining? Two. Okay. You're getting a live view from the helmet camera of Chris Cassidy continuing to work on routing that uh, Ethernet cable with the help of Bob Benkin working together now as they enter the uh, one of the trickier elements of routing the cable around one of the corners of the space station. And then the next one is right over the hump over here. Okay. Ground IV Jasmine Mogbelli guiding them through which wire ties and handrails to route the cable and which direction relative to the position of the station. Hey, Jasmine. Pass 
Testing 3008. Copy. Uh, and uh, you're going to route Zenith to S3 Phase 4. And I've got another caution for you. Do not translate on CAS, deploy Clevis, or ADP. Visually verify ADP is in place when passing the area. Either 3008 or 3007 at one. Negative. Next one is 3016. Okay, so it kind of cuts across the corner away from the Away from the um, radiator. A from Chris. Zero zero six. Any particular uh, item? Three zero one six. Negative. Yeah, I'm coming uh following you over. Okay. Cassidy and Banken working together on some of the final segments of routing this Ethernet cable. Did you say 3016 now has a wire tie? It has a, I put a wire tie on the handrail waiting for Bob. Um, okay, copy. Next, next one, next handrail. 3043, and that's a, another small handrail. C24. Zero. Should be the next Going one. Straight across, the, straight across the beam. Yep, A firm. It's the next one past 3030. And on the other side of the stanchion. Yeah, it's on the other side of the stanchion. And it's, it's oriented just like 3024 was. Zero four three in sight. Copy, and that will be the uh, last one that we wire tie it to. Okay, three thousand and nine. Going in three thousand and ten is complete. Copy three zero one zero and three zero zero nine are complete. And to keep it off the uh, CAS system, should we uh, should be after 3009? What are you expecting, Jesse? It looks like it's, uh, Chris has already got one on the other face down here. I just didn't see it. 
cool down a little bit. Yep. Yeah, she said it, it cuts that corner. So if you go straight from 3009 to 3016, you're saying it's it's hitting the cast? No, I just uh, didn't know about 3016. So now I do, and uh, Chris has a large already on there. I just need to get it captured in there based on the to keep it clear of the cast. Okay, copy. All right. I'm here at 3049. Okay, so you can reel out the excess cable to expose the P1 connector in the middle of the cable reel bag and remove the P1 connector from the reel bag, and then you'll stow the excess of the cable bundle on the Nader stanchion of 3049. Nader stanchion of 3049. Good thing there's an earth down there, because I've been no idea which way is up or down without it. Yeah. This is Mission Control Houston. So Cassidy and Bankin completing the wire ties that route the Ethernet cable to this position. Yeah, we've got a good view in your WBS, Chris. That is a lot. His next task will be to uh, stow some of the excess on the nader side, the side uh, facing away from the earth. As Cassidy is uh, wrapping up some of these Ethernet routing procedures, we do have another Ask NASA question. This one comes from Jeff on Twitter, mentioning that he's seeing a variety of tasks performed by Bankin and Cassidy. And he's asking, does each expedition crew receive specialized training, electrical, mechanical, networking, in preparation for their time on station? The answer is no. They actually uh, provide more generic training, getting uh, familiarization with working with some of these elements. Cassidy, though, and Bankin, both experienced astronauts, working with a variety of different equipment, Cassidy himself even adding to some of the procedures, actually writing them for the lithium ion battery swaps. The head of timeline. Um, so with that, we can either um, call it there. We're currently at 523 on the PET, or we can go after the get ahead task of the CP13 lens filter removal. Uh, that should take about 15 minutes if you guys want to do it. I think, uh, why don't we uh, check and see where we are yeah. once we WBS this thing and uh, see if we want to add a wire tire to. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And then when we get to the top of the Cetus curve, we'll rehack the clock and assess there. Okay, sounds good. Where's the ORU bag? It's, it's at the airlock, right? Correct. Copy that. How much more daylight do we have, Jason? Say again. How much more daylight do we have? 26 minutes. Okay. And just for your essay, uh, Chris and Bob, with 36 uh, that you're going by, that's where the boom goes. That. Anything else here I can help you with, Chris? I think I'm done. Okay. I'm just taking a picture of down the wire, kind of a little mini survey of it. And I'm heading your way, Bob.
This is Mission Control Houston. Status update on the progress of today's spacewalk. Cassidy and Bankin are wrapping up the uh, routing of this Ethernet cable. Um, with that, we're, we'll need a glove and half inspection on both of you, uh, inventory on the real bag, and then uh, the WVS survey, which I think uh, Chris, you're starting to do now. And so in whatever order you want to do those. Gloves EV1 are good, half is dry, no change to my gloves at all. When Bob's done with his, I'll give you the bag. Copy. Let me just complete this uh, translation and then I'll be a status. Okay, Bob. So again, Cassidy and Bankin wrapping up this uh, cable routing procedure. Of their timelined tasks, this one is the last on the timeline. They do have some time uh, if they decide to do a get-ahead task to remove a lens cover of one of the cameras. Both astronauts were laying that they uh, will first complete this last task and then assess the timeline uh, after completing all of the tasks for this last item on today's procedures. Real bag Charlie. It has an adjustable with a long duration tie down tether connected between the D rings and a wire tie on that long duration tie down tether. Copy. There's another adjustable. Copy. Both of those are connected to one wire tie caddy. Bob has the other one. There is a RET, an adjustable with two caps on it, and there's an additional adjustable which came from my mini workstation. Copy, additional adjustable from your mini workstation. And uh, Chris, we're tracking that that's everything inside the uh, real bag. Okay. So, uh, okay. As we get the WVS survey, then we can uh, head back towards the airlock. You guys can uh, stow the the real bag. Either you can attempt to stow it outside for now or put it uh, in the airlock, and then we'll be uh, going after the CP13 lens filter removal. Um, and that's it's up to you guys if you want to go after the lens filter removal or, or call it. Okay, uh, Jaws, I added an additional wire tie to handrail 3224. Copy 3224. And, and I think I've got one more, so it feels like I should just go ahead and yeah. use it to make sure there's not any, uh, any other things that we could do to take care of the Radiator. I'll put it on 3238. Copy, putting a wire tie on 3238. Pressing the 3009-3010 corner. Thing fell out of the envelope. Copy, Chris.
10, water tires installed on 3238. Copy This is good because of the uh, the light the gap here, but uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, one bar on 3282. Do you have it or do you need it? I got it. Copy 3282. Which one was that that you just did, Rick? Chris? Which number? Yeah. Reminder. 3258. Copy 3258. Voila. One in reserve. PET, Jasmine? Five hours, 35 minutes. I don't know how you feel, but it seems like there's no need to uh, 
Head off on that. Hey, Breeze. We'll just head in. Sounds good. You said there's some cedar, cedar spur. I don't know why I feel upside down, but I think it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Take a couple pictures here on the CETA. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so copy. Um, and just a reminder, as you head inboard uh, towards the airlock, you'll want to put your Richmond fair leads in place again. Chris, yours on 3409. And Bob, yours on 3410. And Chris, you'll be weaving your tether again down the port handrails on the CETA spur. Okay. Only one of those 58 pushes. Yeah, I only saw it go like once. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder about the adjustable air lead. Ready for 10. A firm, Bob, 34, 10. My fair lead is in on 34 chance. And while I'm working my fair lead, maybe you can grab the GoPro, which is right at the base of the Cedar Spur. Okay, I'll do that. And we do want Chris to lead back into the airlock. Okay, so you want me to loiter here. Like Chris head back to the airlock. I can still get the GoPro because you've got the bag. So okay. Take care. Okay. Think I'm out of your way. And this one is mine, right? Yep. I see the GoPro on the airlock. And Bob, could we have you cycle your WVS? That time it was off. Your safety tether is around the light there. Is that what it is? The light? Yeah, it looks like it's below the light. Where are you now? Is that Chris Cross going to be okay? Because I put my fair lead in first. I don't know. <laughs> See where it is, I think. See what I'm talking about with a cross back there? Oh, yours is on top. Okay. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston. Cassidy and Bankin have completed the final task on today's procedures. 
the routing of the Ethernet cable. The crew is opting not to switch out the lens cover, one of the get-aheads today, and rather ingress for an on-time EVA in just about six hours. Right now sitting at five hours, 40 minutes into today's spacewalk. Cassidy and Bankin just working on their tethers, making sure they're in a good configura configuration as they make their way back to the airlock to conclude today's spacewalk. The clock will stop once repressurization of the crew lock begins. The station at this time is heading into an orbital night time, 269 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean. Right. Good. Good. Down. Roger, Pete. Okay. okay, Chris, you're breaking up a bit, but I think you said the uh, fair leads in place on 3409 and you're heading down the sea to spur. Um, just remember to weave the uh, tether down the port handrails. Okay, copy that. I can clean it up too. Okay, yeah, that'd be good. And I believe you both called it, but as you uh, head into the airlock, you're going to need to retrieve the GoPro, which uh, you left on handrail 0500, and the ORU bag. Okay, I'm transitioning off the, uh, off the Cetus spur. I think one of my fair leads popped off there. Um, yeah, I got it. I'll get the GoPro. Copy. Thermal cover three. Copy, thermal cover is open. And you can stow the uh, reel bag in the airlock and attach your waist tether to the airlock D-ring extender. Waist tether. Close and lock. Close and lock on both ends. Copy, Chris, and let me know when you're rather ready to configure your safety tether. It's going to go to the aft external airlock key ring. Uh, hold on, Jasmine. I'm just working on the bags. Copy, Chris. Okay, Jasmine, I've got the uh, GoPro and the uh, MUT and its associated RET. Copy, Bob. Go back, Charlie. It's in the airlock. Copy, Chris. And uh, I don't know if you wanted to grab the RU bag or work your tether, just let me know.
Three back in the airlock. Coming out. Copy, Chris. And Chris, the camera's still on you, is that correct? Camera is still on me with its red and L bracket. Copy, thanks. Okay, Chris, for your tether, you're going to be going to the aft external D-ring. You'll tether to and attach your green hook to that aft D-ring. Green you know, hook to the aft D-ring. This is Mission Control Houston, Cassidy and Bankin making their way back into the airlock to complete today's spacewalk today. The station is uh, again entering an orbital nighttime over the South Atlantic Ocean. Check uh, reels unlocked and then you can pick up your yellow hook and stow it on your mini workstation. Most of the work now is the tether configuration to make sure that the crew is safe to ingress. They got through all of their tasks today. They had one item that was officially as a get-ahead, crew opting not to tackle that one today. They still have two more spacewalks scheduled later this month that they'll have the option of uh, getting that task done. That's just removing a filter from one of the cameras on the outside of the station. But the 1B power channel is now outfitted with three new lithium-ion batteries, all up and running. The 3B channel is prepped for their work later this month, and they routed a power cable and an Ethernet cable. The uh, GoPro and the mutt indicator are all uh, in its associated red uh, inside the airlock at this time. Copy, Bob. You can attach your waist tether to the airlock D ring extender. My waist tether is closed and locked, the airlock D-ring extender. Copy, and uh, is that both ends, the end on you as well as the end on the airlock D-ring extender? Affirmative. Copy, with that, uh, you'll be going to the forward external airlock D-ring. You can tether to and attach your green hook to the forward D-ring. The green hook is tethered to the forward D-ring. Copy. The wheel is un unlocked. Copy and gate close hook locked. 
Any of the green hook locked? Two questions. A firm, we need uh, the green hook locked. Okay, the green hook is locked. Copy with that, you can release your yellow hook and stow it on your mini workstation and ingress the airlock. is stowed on my new workstation. I will ingress the airlock. Copy. If there's any of these bags I need to help you with. Oh, I'm just spinning around. Okay. Somewhere in our in our space station is a new airlock airlock uh, thermal cover closure mechanism. <laughs> Gonna be nice. Thermal cover's closed. Copy thermal cover is closed. You can both remove your SUs from the stowage pouch, remove the DCM cover, Velcro to the DCM, and connect your SUs to the DCM. Good work, good work. This is Mission Control Houston, Cassidy, and Bankin are now inside the crew lock. On the other side of that hatch is Doug Hurley and Yvonne Wagner waiting for the uh, to take over the procedures to repressurize that crew lock and get the crew back into the International Space Station. Repressurization start will be the official end time of today's spacewalk. Cassidy and Banking Bank and now working together to essentially hook themselves up to station power and consumables. I got the other bags up here, the medium or you bag the Bag, the bag, the Kulak bag, the GoPro with the mud. Okay. okay, my SCU is attached and verified locked. Copy. Okay, mine is confirmed locked. Copy, Chris. Both of you uh, note a TCV setting of eight max cold minimizes time for SCU cooling. With that, you can switch water to off. Expect an H2O is off message. Either one, water off. Easy two, water off. Okay, caution, do not close hatch until EMU water off for two minutes, and we're about to have a handover in 30 seconds. Another handover of audio and video communication from the station should be regaining that shortly. Flight Director Royce Renfrew leading today's uh, spacewalk flight operations teams here in Mission Control Houston. 
Jasmine Mogbelli, immediately to his right, has been guiding Benkin and Cassidy through today's procedures. She only has a few more tasks on her end before officially handing it over to Doug Hurley inside the station, who will guide them through the repressurization process. Okay, back with you after the handoff. We've got about 30 seconds left. Bankin and Cassidy attached to station power and consumables. Okay, there's two minutes. Chris, you can verify the outer hatch is clear of hardware and the handle position is part of the hatch decal, and then you can close and lock the hatch. It's easier without the uh, bunch of waste cutters there. Yeah. Looks clear all around. No. Copy. Copy. Yeah, Chris, uh, did you copy that two minutes is up? I'm working on edge. Copy. Good wiggle. It is closed and it is latched, and the lock mechanism is locked. Copy. Yes. Hatch is closed and locked. Going over to pre-repress. Check your, um, Bob, for you on the UIA, check oxygen EMU 1 and 2 valves are both open. Oxygen EMU 1, EMU 2 are both open. Switch power EV 1 and 2 to on. EV1 and EV2 power is on, the green LEDs in both cases. Copy. Check the uh, voltage on power EV1 and 2. 18.6 for both. Copy. 18.6 for both. Both of you can switch your powers to SCU. Expect a warning tone. EV1, power SCU. EV2 is SCU. Copy with that. We're complete with the pre-repress. I'll hand you over to Doug and Yvonne. Uh, great work today, guys. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay, welcome back. Uh, on your DCMs, O2 actuator to press. Work. O2 position is press for EV2. EV1, O2 position press as well. Copy that. Chris, check the EV hatch MPEV closed. EV hatch MPEV is closed. Okay, next step, I'm going to start throttling. Uh, just let me know if you guys have any issues. Uh, we'll start slow, just like last time. Okay.
you guys can expect an alert tone as well uh, when you get the 4.0. I'm going to increase it a little. That's good. And with that, we do have repressurization underway. That beginning at 12.14 p.m. Central Time, officially concluding the duration of today's spacewalk, coming in at six hours and one minute. Norm. Good for EV2, good for EV1. Yes. At the time of the start of repressurization, the International Space Station and the Expedition 63 crew were 265 statute miles over the Indian Ocean. We stopped at five. We're going to do the uh, two minutes to uh, stabilize the pressure. Okay, pressure stable. We're going to wait one more minute and check it again. Happy. Again, repressurization began at 12:14 p.m. Central Time. The checks, one of the checks on the way up to the pressure of the International Space Station at 14.7 is to hold at 5 psi for leak checks. That's underway now.
Okay, that's the extra minute. Pressure is stable. Copy the glove heaters and contamination. You can take your O2 actuators to IB. O2 actuator IB, EV1. O2 actuator is IB for EV2. Copy both. Uh, we're going to start uh, repressing again. Just let me know if anything uh, starts to hurt. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Good leak checks at 5 PSI, bringing it back up to the pressure of the International Space Station. Now more than 9 PSI, heading towards 14.7. Now coming up on 12 PSI. This was the 229th spacewalk for International Space Station assembly and maintenance. It was the fifth conducted this year in 2020, the second spacewalk for Expedition 63. The eighth in Cassidy's career, his career total at 43 hours and 22 minutes. For Bankin, his total is 49 hours and 41 minutes, also his eighth spacewalk. He's now 11th on the all-time list for most cumulative time of spacewalking in EVA history. Today's spacewalk began at 6.14 a.m., 6.13, sorry, a.m. Central Time, ending at 6, at 12.14 p.m. for six hours and one minute duration. And the crew lock is about equal to zero. Of the 229 spacewalks, the total time of all 229 adds up to 60 days and 34 minutes of total spacewalking time. Pressure now a little bit more than 14 PSI. Almost complete in the repressurization process. That look for DPDT, it looks stable in here. We got the alert down here. Okay, 
Bobby, if you want to make sure you're clear, we're going to go ahead and uh, get the hatch open. I'm clear. Houston Airlock, we're going to one decimal two four zero. Step two. Stop being secure. And repressurization is complete. The hatch is open. Doug Hurley and Yvonne Wagner will work together to get the crew back into the equipment lock and start removing some of their equipment. Yes, Doug, we will take care of step four. First into the equipment lock is Bob Bankin, Anatoly Ivanushin from Moscosmos coming into the equipment lock to help in the uh, these final steps to remove the suits from Bankin and Cassidy. First step is the removal of that safer unit, simplified aid for EVA rescue. This is on the bottom portion of their sort of backpack of the EMU, the extravehicular mobility unit. As NASA astronaut Doug Hurley works to get Benkin and Cassidy out of their suits, aided by Ivan Wagner and Anatoly Ivanishin from Roscosmos. A quick summary of some of the activities from today's spacewalk. Cassidy and Benkin both successfully installed the final lithium-ion battery onto the 1B channel of the Starboard 6 truss. All batteries were checked out and all three are able to store power on the 1B channel. That completes the upgrades to seven of eight power channels on the International Space Station. There's one more left. Cassidy and Bankham will go out the hatch once again at the end of this month to complete that final channel. 
They already got some work done ahead of time to prep for some of that work, including installing some handling and translation aids, also storing some portable foot restraints, and breaking torque of uh, some of the batteries, all of the batteries that they'll be removing and replacing with new lithium-ion batteries, again, coming up later this month. They were also to able to address some tasks that were originally on a long list of get-ahead tasks over the course of the two spacewalks that were designated for upgrading the 1B channel. But Cassidy and Banking got way ahead of the schedule, especially on the last spacewalk, doing most of the work, so they were able to address a lot of the get-ahead tasks, including the routing of power and Ethernet cables on the outside of the International Space Station. One of the uh, get-aheads was to remove an H fixture on the mast canister of one of the station's solar arrays. This is some preparation work and one of the original get-aheads for some future power upgrades. Benkin was unable to remove that H fixture, but again, this was one of the get-aheads, so it gives the flight operations teams plenty of time to come up with new procedures and techniques to get that H fixture removed on a future spacewalk. The crew also opted not to remove a lens filter that was on one of the external cameras. Again, another task that can be addressed on a later spacewalk. The primary task of upgrading the 1B channel is complete, and they even got a head start on the 3B channel to be completed later in July. So again, one more power channel coming up to complete the three. That'll be the 3B power channel on the XS6 truss, the same truss segment that Benkin and Cassidy worked on today. There's two more spacewalks scheduled to complete that channel, the final channel in the of the eight that uh, consists of the station's power system. as Doug Hurley works to remove the elements of the suits of Cassidy and Banken after today's six hour and one minute spacewalk. We do have one more item for you to tune into on NASA TV. NASA astronaut Kate Rubens will be discussing her upcoming second long duration mission to the International Space Station with her crewmates, Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kudsvertskov of Roscosmos. They'll be conducting a crew news conference at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern today, Wednesday, July 1st. Be sure to tune into NASA TV to hear about the upcoming mission where they're scheduled to launch on October 14th of this year. Once again, this was the 229th spacewalk of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. Today's six hour and one minute spacewalk makes it the eighth for Cassidy in his career, totaling 43 hours and 22 minutes of spacewalking time. For Bob Benkin, his total is at 49 hours and 41 minutes, putting him as 11th on the list of cumulative time for all spacewalkers in history. Today's spacewalk began a little earlier than scheduled at 6.13 a.m. Central Time and wrapped up at 12.14 p.m. Central Time for a six-hour, one-minute spacewalk. Station on one, we see the enabled caution 
no immediate action for you. As our coverage of today's spacewalk, the 229th in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, as our coverage of today's spacewalk comes to a close, we'll address one more hashtag Ask NASA question. This one comes from Nicole, who's asking, what will Chris and Bob do when they come back from the spacewalk? The spacewalk, as you can imagine, is a long day for the astronauts. It was not just the six hour and one minute spacewalk. There was a lot of pre-work, which included pre-breathing and in-suit light exercise. It was a full day for them. So after uh, removing the suits, they'll have the ability to eat and uh, enter into a pre-sleep period essentially getting uh, wrapping up for the day. Space Station is at uh, Greenwich Mean Time, now about 5.36 GMT PM. Cassidy and Benkin do have the ability to drink a little bit of water from their suits during the spacewalk. But it'll be, once they get their suits off, it'll be the first time in many hours that they'll have to eat something. Station on one uh, for the airlock. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Doug, uh, we're not seeing data coming from Chris's suit. Can you check that he's on the pry and low? Okay, you want Chris in low for comm? A firm, pry and low, please. A 
Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, that did it. Thank you. And Doug, was one of the switches in a different config? Which one did you toggle? Went to pry, to hard line, back to pry. Copy, thanks. And we think maybe the frequency button was in the middle, not in low. Okay, copy, thanks. Once again, today's uh, six-hour and one-minute spacewalk began at 6.13 a.m. Central Time and officially ended at 12.14 p.m. Central Time. With both of our crew members' helmets removed, Cassidy and Bankham will continue to uh, get removed from their suits and end their day. And that will wrap up our coverage of today's spacewalk, the 229th, in support of International Space Station Assembly and Maintenance. Once again, stay tuned for the crew news conference of NASA astronaut Kate Rubens discussing her upcoming mission to the International Space Station with her crewmates Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kuchverskov. That's beginning at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Until then, this is Mission Control Houston. Halfway through one of the most productive years in recent space history, NASA's Exploration Systems Development Division is moving humans ever closer to deep space exploration. The Space Launch System, NASA's next generation deep space launch vehicle, had an intense spring full of development and testing. Testing on the avionics system, responsible for controlling the Space Launch System's solid rocket boosters, began in April. The avionics system will ignite, steer, and jettison the two solid rocket boosters and will continue to undergo an extensive series of tests this summer. In May, structural tests on the SLS booster forward skirt proved it could withstand millions of pounds of launch stress during a series of ground tests. The SLS core stage will be powered by four RS-25 engines that are now undergoing preparation for test firing at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. Following initial testing, the engines will be integrated with the core stage and the entire assembly will be tested on the B-2 test stand. Because the SLS core stage is 50% longer than the Saturn moon rocket stages, 